And good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another Smoker Show Season 2, Episode 1 with my good friend, Mr. Phil Lusardo. How are you doing, Phil? Season two, episode one, and my phone just rang. So here's what I'm gonna do. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna mute it. I'm gonna mute it. You know why? Why? You know why I'm muting it? Why? Because I don't feel like getting yelled at you, uh, yeah. by you tonight. I, I don't. So I'm just gonna go ahead and mute that because I know how cranky you get when anything in this room makes even the, the the slightest little bit of a noise. Yeah, you don't use these headphones that I use because I try to monitor all the phone lines and everything. So I have everything directly into my ears. Even the slightest noise just like pierces my ears. Really? But anyway, I'm going to try to pierce your ears tonight. We are, hey, buddy. Welcome back to the Smoker Show. Welcome back to the United States of America. Yeah, they let me in. I was really surprised. But yeah, it's good. It's good to be back for a short time. I mean, our travel schedule September and October is pretty brutal. We'll talk about that later on in the show. But we are starting off with a bang with a, with a very great guest on. And uh, something I've been, we've been trying to get Dr. F here for, for a very long time. Everybody has to understand that they are seven hours ahead. So Dr. F is doing a very big favor for us to be able to be up at four o'clock in the morning to join us. But I think for this type of show and, you know, the the history that we've built over the season one and uh, some of the people that follow the show, I think it's very, very important to come on and just answer some of these basic questions. But before we do all that, Mr. Phil, you know, as always, we have to thank our wonderful, our wonderful sponsors. We have sponsors. to thank our sponsors. And of course, our sponsors for The Smoker Show, Inikin, Juno, Lunar Rover. Uh, I believe that uh, that coupon code is still uh, going strong, right? Yes. Uh, Smoker Show gets you what? Uh, 10% or 15% off 15% your order? 15% off. Uh, my Vapor Store, you use the uh, coupon code MTL10, right? Is that right? Correct. Or 10% wow. off at MVS for uh, for uh, platform products. We have Five Pawns, Naked 100, and of course the fine folks over there at Joytech. We appreciate uh, all of our sponsors uh, that, that uh, do support and sponsor the, uh, the Smoker Show. And we ask that you uh, take care of them back. Just send them a little thank you or uh, maybe uh, maybe even buy something from them. We'd appreciate that. Yeah, that would be nice. Uh, we want to welcome all the guys that are coming in from, and the gals that are coming from the ST Show. We appreciate them hanging out with us here. The telephone lines are 215-383-5752. 215-383-5752. Since we do have Dr. F today, you're more than welcome to call in with any question that you have. Try to keep it relevant to vaping, obviously. Um, no uh, question is a dumb question. So if there's something that you've been wondering about vaping or something that's been hesitating you from trying vaping from what you've heard on the news and the media and this fear-mongering propaganda that's going on here in the United States, please feel free to, to, to call in and ask. By the way, Phil, I want to tell you what. Oh, I would what? take Pibusardo management a hundred times <laughs> over trying to entertain three women and a female dog for vacation. So I'm glad I'm glad. What are you trying to say there, pal? Come on. It can't be that bad, is it? I'm glad to be back. Yeah, it was horrible. Uh, Anyway, so let's introduce uh, from the University of Patras and, of course, the Onasio Cardio Surgery Center in Greece, one of the most prominent, one of the most well-known electronic cigarette uh, and e-liquid scientists has been doing this for many, many years. Our good friend from my home country. I haven't seen anybody from Italy except Dr. Pelosa, Phil. Uh, Dr. Konstantinos Farsadinos. Uh, welcome to the program, Dr. F. Thank you for Hi. coming. Hi, Dimitris. I, I, I wonder who the hell starts a season in August. I mean, I know, <laughs> right? Well, this is not Greece, you know. I mean, you know, this is not Greece, but generally I leave for my vacation June. So that, that's basically, yeah. We, well, we had to get back. We had to get back because there's a lot of stuff going on. We took a month off, so I think that's enough. Way, way, uh, kind of like Greek vacation. You take yeah, off, you take off for a for whole sure. month. And, uh, hey, and listen, before before we get going here, uh, I, I just want to take some time to, to number one, personally thank Dr. F for, for, for joining the show, because it's, it's, what, 4 o'clock in the morning right yes, now over absolutely. there? absolutely, yes. Okay, so, I mean, thank you, right? Uh, that's number one. Number two, thank you for your, your tire, tireless uh, support of the industry. You know, there, there's a lot of bad media that comes out uh, when it comes to vaping, and you know this, and one of the the first resources that I go to, well, the first resource I go to is Dimitri, right? And then I say, hey, what what is Dr. F's response to this? Uh, I know every time I've come to you, Dr. Farsalinos, every time I've sent other people to you, uh, you've always answered my questions, you've always answered their questions, uh, you've always had uh, responses to to the really bad media stories or the bad studies that come out and i for one appreciate that and uh please don't ever stop uh thanks phil i need to just clarify that i'm not doing anything for the industry i'm basically 
have great faith in the product as a public health revolution. And of course, some industry must produce the product. So that's an, uh, an indirect, let's say, support for the industry. It's not my main purpose is not to support the industry or any industry in general. Yeah, you know what I find interesting, Doctor? If, I, I'm just going to start with this question. This is this is the number one question that I think that we can simplify for people. Is there any reason if you're an adult smoker in 2019 and you've tried the available NRT methods, meaning you've tried the patches and the gum and, and other means of quitting smoking and you've been unsuccessful because we know the success rate is very, very low with those products. Is there any reason that somebody should not try vaping as a means of harm reduction and getting away from combustible tobacco? Not at all. It's totally non-brainer. Uh, smokers, of course, know that smoking is bad. Everyone knows that. Uh, smokers know that the best option is to quit by yourself without the use of anything. They know that the second best option is to use uh, pharmaceuticals and approved methods. And the problem is that they don't know many of them, the majority, basically. And it's becoming worse year after year that uh, the next best option is to use the e-cigarettes. The... It's not simple. I mean, it's no brainer, as John Brighton from the UK said recently, it's no brainer. You have to use e-cigarettes if you don't want to quit with other methods or if you can't quit with other methods. I, I, I think uh, one of the biggest misconceptions, I mean, we use this 95% uh, uh, Royal College of Physicians report constantly when we're talking about e-cigarettes, but people don't realize that there is tons and tons of peer-reviewed published studies already. I mean, you yourself, you've been part of what, 60 now? 60 studies? More than 70, but uh, you, you need to, to know that Public Health England is updating their uh, report on e-cigarettes every year. So they started in 2015-14 by mentioning this 95%. But they are updating it every year, and every year they maintain the same position. So it's not an old story, and you know something has changed over the years, and today we have a different situation, and we're just using the old quote from 2014-2015. This is a 2019 quote, and it's every year the report is being updated, taking into consideration all new research, and they keep coming up with the same conclusion. So that's uh, an updated uh, assessment, not something which is old and we're just repeating it because people like the sound of the 95% less harmful. It's something that is very new and it's very much applicable to the situation today. That's really interesting. And I just want to, I want to like really make that point there that, you know, a lot of times we use and we've quoted so many times that 95% number, right? That 95% yeah. number. And a lot of people will say, well, that 95% number came out, what, five years ago? But what you're saying is they are constantly doing research. They are constantly uh, updating the research that they are doing, and they have yet to change that 95% exactly. number. They are continuously updating their review of the literature. It's not their own research. They're looking at everything. And they are uh, updating their recommendations. And their recommendations and assessments have remained the same all these years. So it's not an old story. It's an updated story based on the most recent evidence. That's clear. And that's why the position of the UK in general has not changed. And it's becoming uh, even more aggressive in favor of e-cigarettes. Yeah? Not uh, aggressive in the US way, which is a disaster. Uh, they are becoming more aggressive. Why? Because they think that they have not exploited the full potential of e-cigarettes yet. And that's happening in a country with one of the most liberal uh, regulations and uh, the strongest support from the uh, scientific community on e-cigarettes. Yeah? And they still think they haven't used the full potential of e-cigarettes as a smoking cessation aid and as a harm reduction tool. Uh, just just a, a little note here for, for you guys that are smokers that could be possibly, or you're a new vapor watching this. In, in the UK, in two hospitals already, the government has allowed for vape shops to open up. That way, 
patients with COPD or that, that have tobacco-related illnesses that are in, in hospitals and can't go outside to a vape shop to transition this product, they'll have accessibility of the product in the hospital itself. I mean, if you would have told me 10 years ago, Doc, you know, when we started this silly thing and when I first met you back in 2011, that, that hospitals would have a vape shop inside, I would say you're absolutely crazy. But here's a, a, a government that's determined to eliminate smoking from their citizens. In 2011, even the UK scientists were against the cigarettes because it was something new and they didn't know enough about it. But they were open-minded, they looked at the literature, they monitored the situation themselves in their country, and they came up with these recommendations because they've seen uh, that they work. I mean, it's, it, it's that simple. Uh, it's nothing relevant to the situation, nothing similar to the situation in the U.S., uh, which is uh, basically a campaign of uh, intimidating everyone against uh, e-cigarettes in a very, you know, uh, terrorizing way that, you know, all the bad things of humanity are coming from e-cigarettes, something like that. I mean, it's... Um, it's inevitable that the uh, vast majority of the population is grossly misinformed about uh, e-cigarettes. It's, yeah. uh, it's, not, it's not at all surprising. Yeah. So uh, to Fernando, uh, that is actually one of the questions that I have coming up. So let's uh, just table that for now. Uh, but uh, Dr. F, one of the things that we, we always talk about on the show, um, and I don't know if Dimitri has that slide ready or not, but we talk about the fact that um, the best way to va- there we go perfect that's amazing Dimitri's unbelievable um, smoking equals bad reducing cigarettes through vaping equals good eliminating cigarettes through vaping equals better not smoking and not vaping equals best right because we're talking about harm reduction we're not talking about harm elimination correct so what I want to ask you is l- let's get the bad stuff out of the way first right and we're not trying to hide things from anybody. Uh, we are saying that vaping is a, a safer alternative uh, for you than smoking cigarettes. So let's say vaping is 95% safer than smoking a cigarette, right? Mm-hmm. What what does that 5% equate to uh, as far as harm to the body? Does that, that question make sense? No. It doesn't okay. make sense because the uh, 5% residual risk is not coming from um, uh, long-term epidemiological studies who are saying that, you know, you have um, 200% or 300% higher chance of developing heart attacks when smoking, and you have 10% or 15% higher chance uh, when you are vaping. That's a 5% difference, approximately. Uh, Yeah, 300%, 15 is 5%, the residual risk. So we don't have this evidence in terms of real uh, risk, but this um, assessment is coming and it has been clarified repeatedly by Public Health England. Uh, it, it is coming from an, uh, indirectly from an assessment of the harmful emissions from e-cigarettes compared to the harmful emissions uh, from tobacco cigarettes. And that's why they came up with this assessment, which is pretty conservative. It's not something, you know, uh, over enthusiastic. It's quite conservative because in most cases the levels of emissions are not just 20 times lower in the cigarettes, they are much, much lower than that. And in some cases, some emissions are completely absent from the cigarettes. So um, it was a conservative assessment taking into consideration that we don't have clinical studies yet, epidemiological studies long term, because we can't have them, it's too early. Um, But we are seeing all the clinical data are showing improvements, all the limited data that have been uh, released until now. Uh, Clinical data are not considered the uh, recent publications about e-cigarettes causing heart attacks. These are completely nonsense. My most recent commentary in my blog was about e-cigarettes causing heart attacks, which happened 10 years before vaping, which was nonsense. But that was exactly the study that was published. Um, because when Brad Rodu uh, obtained the data set and analyzed the data, he found that most of the vapors who reported having had heart attacks, they had the heart attacks on average 10 years before initiating vaping. Because the data set contained the information about 
the age, your current age, the age when you had the heart attack, and the age when you initiated vaping. And of course, the scientists did not report these numbers and the year, the, the years. So they just said we found an association, so we said it's increased the risk of heart attacks. As you understand, it's a bit funny to say that it increases the risk of a heart attack, which has already happened before you <laughs> initiated the cigarette. So, but, you know, that's basically a, a scandal. And I think that this study should be retracted because it's completely nonsense. It is meaningless. It is misinformative. And if you know that, and it has been already reported by Brad Rodo to the editors, then you are intentionally misinforming. You can't say that that was unintentional. Even if it was unintentional initially, first of all, it's a mistake and you have to admit it. And second of all, you have to correct it. And the only way of correcting it is retracting the paper and publishing the reason why you retracted the paper. And it's as, it's as simple as that. I don't think it's going to happen. It would have happened if I had published a study saying that e-cigarettes don't cause heart attacks and they have they had made a mistake in the study. But when you are reporting and publishing a study that finds problems, it's very hard to retract the study. Yeah. That's I, I know you're... That's but, normal. That's completely abnormal. But we are uh, in a situation that all these uh, science abnormalities are pretty normal and sound pretty normal. Okay, I know you're uh, you're you're very outspoken when it comes to um, bad studies, I, and you're also very very outspoken when it comes to you know bad things in vaping, and you don't. It, you don't really care what people say about you. I mean, if it's bad, you point it out, right? And I think yeah. that's a really good thing to do. Um, yeah. have, have you ever published anything that caused another study to be retracted? Uh, there are no bad studies for vaping that have ever been retracted. I have published several rebutals and studies that reject previous findings. And of course, none of the previous findings have ever been rejected. Uh, and have never been uh, sort of retracted. Uh, uh, they have, uh, the, the, the authors of these studies have not even apologized or uh, made any kind of corrections. On the contrary, they have attacked me. I mean, that's uh, normal. I mean, uh, uh, probably you haven't read a letter that was submitted for one of my latest study on uh, aldehydes from flavors. Uh, which was a rebuttal of the study by from some U.S. scientists who said that flavors are the main cause for, for, for aldehyde emissions from e-cigarettes. We proved them wrong. They sent a very insulting paper. And in fact, I was laughing and I enjoyed their letter because I only used their own, you know, they were citing studies which they haven't read or they didn't even understand what they were saying. So by using their own citations, I made them look stupid because they were citing studies which had found aldehyde emissions lower than my own study and about three to four orders of magnitude that means 1,000 to 10,000 times lower levels than what they reported in their original study, uh, which I basically debunked. Uh, it was, uh, I mean, carelessness to the extreme degree, because when you want to send, send a letter, and specifically an insulting letter, you need to be very careful of what citations you are using. You risk embarrassing yourself when your own citations are against your own study. And that's exactly what happened with him. Uh, for people who knew, who know, who are scientists and understand, uh, it was one of the uh, most joyful letters they have ever read uh, because, I mean, it's stupid. I used his own arguments against him. And I didn't even use anything beyond that, only his own arguments. And the letter was a report of your citation, 
is saying something different than what you said, but you are using it, so you are misusing it. Anyway, it's unfortunately, you know, these things are should have been an embarrassment for them, but it's not. They just continue their agenda because this is acceptable. Yeah. It is acceptable by the scientific community, a large part. It is acceptable by the regulatory authorities. It is intentionally done by the regulatory authorities. They are trying to find only bad things. They're not even looking at any prospect which may be Benefit, positive. Yeah. So, right. um, you know, when you are uh, launching a program, a funding program, and uh, your, uh, uh, the title of the program is Understanding the Adverse Health Effects of Something, by definition, for those who want to be funded, you know, you need to look at the adverse health effects because that's what they ask you to do. Right. So you're not looking for anything else. Yeah. So when you when your source of funding is only asking you to check for bad things, you are only going to check for bad things. I mean, that's, yeah. yeah, I think, Dr. F, you bring a, a very good point up, and this is something we've talked about m many, many times, that a lot of these programs, like the, you know, like the University of California with Dr. Glantz and, and some of these other universities, they're getting huge, huge amounts of money. I mean, the last grant that Glantz got was like $20 million to basically find vaping is bad. I mean, we're talking about a tremendous amount of money. So, you know, I mean, if you come out and just say flat out, hey, vaping is good, there's no reason for anybody to give you any more money. And I think that in order for them to continue to get that source of funding coming in, these grants that they get for for research, you have to find and, and try to manipulate the data to fit your narrative. Uh, uh, that's the problem. I, I, I would have no problem at all if, ba if vaping is found to be bad based on good, uh, concise science. Right. Uh, based, when it's based on manipulation of statistics, on selectively neglecting, ignoring, or whatever you can call it, specific evidence which doesn't fit your own arguments. And you have the data, because if you have access to the questionnaire, you know all the questions that were asked, and you have the data for everything. Uh, so when you are doing that, well, that's not science to prove that vaping is wrong. Yeah. Uh, that, that, that's not science that proves that vaping is wrong. That's just a predetermined conclusion uh, for which you are trying to find ways to prove it. Right. You know, yeah. That's uh, not science. By the way, the telephone lines are open 215 383 5752. If you are shy and don't want to talk on the phone, you can drop the question in the chat. Bill is collecting them for me and tossing them my way. So let me just, since we're on that topic, let me bring this question up from the chat. I've noticed a lot of the anti vaping studies often used were only through released. Uh, through pay-to-publish studies, which are willing to publish anything as long as they pay to release it. So why are the legitimate... No, no, no. Uh, I, I, I wouldn't agree with that. Uh, we've also used uh, publications which are paid, and uh, uh, it depends on the journals. There are very good journals which um, ask for a fee once it is published, but they are not predatory journals. Um, we call you know, the journals that publish everything without any peer review and so on, we call them predatory journals. But there are many well-respected journals with a publication fee that uh, don't publish everything. I have had even myself studies that were rejected by journals like that. Uh, I have rejected several studies being a reviewer in them, and they have been rejected eventually. So um, I haven't seen uh, studies published, serious studies being published in what we call predatory journals, journals that publish anything you, you, you send them, just get the money. Okay, so uh, I want to bring this up here real quick. Um, this, is, uh, this was published this week here in Wisconsin. I want to just toss some topics out so we can just debunk them right up. And when you look at this headline, uh, Dr. F, it says, Wisconsin health officials urge people to stop vaping after a sudden and mysterious rise in lung disease. And if you look buried, buried deep down into the story, you're going to see that some of these patients uh, reported vaping uh, uh, nicotine as well as THC in the weeks and months before their symptoms first appear. Nowhere, of course, in the headline here do we see the THC being mentioned. So, uh, I mean, basically what... All, yeah, the, the, headline, the headline is wrong by definition. Yeah. When you say uh, a rise in, in lung disease, 
you must have some numbers on a population level that in previous time periods, previous years, previous six month periods, I don't know what they use, uh, that they were having lower rates of hospitalization, for example, in, uh, for lung disease. And then you have a sudden increase. What they are, they mean is, uh, what they are doing is using some cases and mispresenting these cases as a rise in lung disease. You know, uh, let's suppose for a, for a, for a moment that, uh, how many cases were there? Five, four, ten? Eight cases. Eight cases. Uh, how many vapors are there in the U.S.? Uh, at least, at, at least, you know, between the three, four million full time and maybe Five ten million. million. Yeah, uh, okay. dual let's use. Sub- let's suggest it's four. Let's be conservative. Yeah. Uh, eight cases in four million is uh, better than the safest medication you can find anywhere. Yeah. So it, it, it's nothing. It, it reminds me of the story of uh, lipoid pneumonia caused by glycerol. And of course, glycerol cannot cause lipoid pneumonia. That was cases, some cases uh, that were reported, reportedly caused by vaping. And there is even a case uh, study which was published in CHEST, a very respected uh, lung journal, which is completely nonsense because glycerol is an alcohol, is an alcohol and uh, lipoid pneumonia is caused by lipid. Uh, and uh, there was this misunderstanding but even if glycerol could cause lipoid pneumonia what we're talking about four or five cases out of millions of vapors worldwide which is nothing you know uh, so um, i'm sure that in wisconsin because i haven't seen any reports of any epidemiological analysis of lung cases uh, so it's not a mysterious rise in lung disease. It is some cases of lung disease, and we don't even know what these people, uh, kids, I don't know if they were kids or not, what they were using. And we don't even know if vaping is uh, in any case associated with that, because, you know, we may say that uh, it's not vaping the cause, it's uh, July the cause, because all the cases happened in July, so there's something with the month. Um, You can't blame vaping for everything you know it doesn't make sense you know what's what's really weird about this headline though nowhere on there does it say that wisconsin health officials urge people to stop smoking <laughs> this, this is what the this is what the or real stop this, using this, THC. yeah right yeah right. right i mean it's just to me we we'll always have to compare it to something that you said since day one that when we're talking about vaping and studies in general or anything we always must compare it to to smoking because this is the way that we have always marketed and and produced these products. This is an alternative for people that are actually smoking, not for people that are taking up vaping or whatever the, the case might be. Uh, and even if there is an uptake in initiation here in the United States, it all to me to me personally, it just shows that kids are smarter than adults and they're not smoking and they're picking up vaping because people are going to pick up stuff. But the, the fact that they don't mention smoking anywhere this and this happens constantly in the United States and in other countries as well too. Greece, we're having our issues there as well too with the government. The fact that they don't mention smoking to me seems that it, it, this this economic structure of people smoking in the United States with health care and with taxes and all this economic impact that vaping could possibly have on a global economy is, is really the root of the cause. You know what? Someone must ask the U.S. officials, any U.S. official, uh, a simple question. Uh, for those people who want to use marijuana, uh, and in some states it's already legal, it's going to be legal in many others and so on. Uh, would these officials prefer people to smoke it or to vape it? And that would be a very interesting question and a potentially embarrassing uh, answer. Uh, let's see, uh, let's pose the question and let's uh, wait to hear their response. It will be a very interesting question. Yeah, I, 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 I totally agree. Phil? Uh, well, I got a bunch of questions for Dr. F, so let's go back and forth a little bit here. First of all, uh, Doctor, we uh, when we were in Germany, we talked about some upcoming studies that you have coming out. Uh, any any updates on those studies or anything that you can tell us? What studies? Uh, there were a couple studies that we were talking about in Germany that you had um, coming out. Yeah, we have one study about the association between cigarette use and heart attacks. 
Okay. Uh, and uh, it's uh, under review. We expect the, the, the answer from the journal soon. Uh, basically, it's on the third revision. Uh, we expect the answer soon. Uh, we have a study about kids, which was, uh, funnily enough, rejected in a journal, but uh, I have already published the results. I, I presented the results in a conference at GFN in uh, Warsaw, uh, and it's going to be published in a, some journal uh, in the near future. Uh, we had a recent study about flavor, which was coming from the EU, um, those who are um, uh, responsible for monitoring the EU regulations uh, released last year a very fear mongering study about flavors in the e cigarette liquids containing potentially toxic chemicals as flavoring compounds, which was again nonsense. Um, and uh, we have another study about the EU because Glands recently, last year, published a study saying that e-cigarette use prevents smoking cessation in Europe. And of course, it was the usual manipulation of, um, basically it was exploitation of the fact that the previous Eurobarometer that Glantz used didn't ask people when you quit smoking. So he was uh, considering former smokers, uh, even people who have quit smoking before the cigarettes were invented. And when you look at the whole group of former smokers, which may be a former, you may have former smokers of 20, 30 years, of course you're going to find that e cigarette use is not associated with former, being a former smoker because many of them have quit without the use of e cigarettes because they didn't know that this it didn't exist. The e cigarette didn't exist at that time. Right. But uh, so our response was using the latest Eurobarometer, which asked the question about when did you quit smoking? And we found that for uh, former smokers who have quit in the last five years, vaping increases the chance of being a former smoker by five times. <laughs> we the exact opposite of what he found. Yeah. Uh, you know, things like that. We're trying to catch up all the bad stories out there. Okay. Uh, another question that I have for you, and this is um, this is around the ICOS, okay? And I'm not sure like how much experience that you have with the ICOS. Uh, of course, I'm talking about the the heat not burn product that I'm sure is going to be introduced here in the U.S. very very soon. Uh, now that it's been approved to for sale, um, do you know if the Royal College of Physicians is working on a number similar to that 95 percent number? that we get for vaping? Are they are they working not on yet, a similar yet, number not for yet. the ICOs? Not, not, not yet, because it's still very early, and most of the studies have been done by the uh, industry and by the companies themselves. So they are not yet ready to uh, generate a number. It's okay. definitely more harmful than e-cigarettes. That's a fact. Say that again. It's definitely more harmful than uh, vaping. It's more harmful than vaping. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, and you're not willing to put a number against that, right? Like if vaping is 95, are you willing to put a number on ICOs? Uh, an estimate? But I would say that it's about 12 to 15% the risk of smoking. Okay. 12 to, okay. So let's say 10 to 15. Okay. Okay. There's a big gap between uh, heated tobacco products and uh, smoking too. So they are basically quite a viable alternative for those who cannot quit with vaping. Okay. Uh, in uh, one of the very few studies that were published by independent groups, uh, I published, I have published two studies on ICOS, um, and I have a third one which is going to be submitted soon, um, and the fourth one. But um, we clearly mentioned that um, it is preferable for someone who wants to quit smoking and can't use the approved methods to start with the cigarettes. And only if they fail, should they try a heated tobacco product. And that's uh, the truth that I also uh, suggest today. Nothing has changed and nothing is going to change, to be honest. Uh, uh, there is no way that any heated tobacco product will be less harmful than uh, vaping. 
Which is really, really interesting with the FDA coming up. You know, we, we have a deadline here for PMTAs approving vapor products to, to, to get market authorization here. And one of the arguments that we're trying to make is that based on the available data that we have now, I mean, there's literally thousands of studies that can prove that vaping is less harmful than, than cigarettes, but vaping is less harmful than IQOS, which was approved, was given market authorization here in the United States to be sold. Mm. So creating this, well, you, this... You know why? Because the, the regulation is based on product-specific data and product-specific proof and not uh, category. And that's the main problem. Um, these two are very different products, you know. Uh, the heated tobacco products and the e-cigarettes. And um, the e-cigarettes have a huge variability of different products for specific reasons, and justifiably so. But that makes it uh, unfeasible to uh, comply with regulations which are product-specific. Uh, now, imagine if uh, uh, to approve the sales of apples, uh, or oranges, you would ask every single farmer to provide evidence for their own farm specifically in order to get approval. No one could be able to do that. Uh, unfortunately, the regulation has that kind of an orientation. And although I'm sure the FDA will accept if you ask them that uh, vaping products are in general, in general, you can talk about exceptions less harmful than heated tobacco products, um, it's going to be much more likely to have uh, more heated tobacco products than e-cigarettes after the end of the FDA deadline, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, let me go ahead and pull up. Uh, thanks for the super chat, uh, Mick. Once again, I am pretty sure Phil has absolutely no idea where that money is going. So, But <laughs> once we figure it out, we'll make a donation with it. Um, what are your thoughts on the latest World Health Organization reports? Now, keep in mind, this is a, an organization that has World Health in its title, and it seems like their stance on vaping is it's just completely opposite of, of benefiting uh, public health. Yeah, the, the World Health Organization is, uh, um, I would say, stubborn and maintains the same position. Uh, we've seen that in the past, to accept harm reduction for... Uh, uh, people who inject drugs, it took them 20 years. Uh, they've made uh, a lot of mistakes in the past. It's nothing new. Uh, so they are just keeping this, uh, uh, this uh, uh, stance. The uh, it's going to take a long time for them to change. And they, with the current mentality of, uh, you know, uh, basically confusing smoking abstinence from uh, nicotine abstinence and confusing smoking with tobacco because they are mainly have a campaign against tobacco. And when you compare tobacco cigarettes as a tobacco product and snooze as a tobacco product, we're talking about two uh, completely different uh, products in, the, in an opposing spectrum of, of, of risk. Uh, snooze might very well be less harmful than e-cigarettes too, to be honest. Yeah. It is very likely. Uh, so, <laughs> but, the, but snooze is a tobacco product. Uh, uh, the, the WHO has the same stance. They have made some very slight improvements. For example, in the uh, latest COP, they accepted that it is possible for e-cigarettes to have a, posi a positive public health impact. Uh, that was just, you know, a possibility. They never accepted that. But at least it was mentioned in a document that uh, there is this possibility. Uh, and uh, it's going to take a long time for it to change. But I don't think it's very relevant to the uh, U.S. Uh, uh, situation because the U.S. is not particularly influenced uh, by the WHO. However, the other countries, and especially uh, Asian countries and uh, developing countries like Latin America, are very, very much influenced uh, by the WHO. And that's uh, a, a big problem because they are blindly following 
rules that are causing public health harm. Um, they're following suggestions in the form of regulation that are causing public health harm. The latest example is India. In India, with 110 million smokers, three, almost 300 million tobacco users, um, and, in, uh, and uh, in a country where uh, oral tobacco products are even worse than smoking, uh, Swedish mats tried to sell snooze several years ago and they were thrown out of the country. Yeah. Uh, in a country, India is the only country where oral cancer rates are higher than lung cancer rates. There is no other country in the world where the incidence of oral cancers is higher than lung cancers. It's only happening in India, yeah. an indication of how bad the oral tobacco products are. And snooze would have basically eliminated lung ca oral cancer, yeah? But they were just thrown out. Yeah. And they keep on using those uh, uh, horrible products that they have, but even for smokers. So recently, that was one month ago, the Indian Council of Medical Research released a white paper and they said, we have to ban them. You know, simple. They didn't say ban tobacco cigarettes. Yeah. They said, we've made improvements. You know, we have one smoking cessation center in every state. Amazing. For one yeah. and a half billion <laughs> people and for 300 million smokers. Yeah. And every dental college has, I mean, it, it was so funny that you have to read it to believe it. So I will find it and I will read it to you. And uh, I will let the, um, uh, uh, the audience, uh, the viewers, uh, understand uh, the argument that ICMR, the Indian Council of Medical Research, is using. Um, uh, they explain that, uh, you know, it's bad, it affects every health system. It was... Basically, they were cherry picking studies, showing cell damage, damage to the DNA, you know, all that kind of stuff. So they said that um, under the National Tobacco Control Program of India, the support for tobacco cessation is multi pronged. Uh, so, what does that mean? One tobacco cessation center is being established in all the districts. <laughs> I mean, that's going to solve it. That's going to solve 13, the issue. 15 districts, yeah, yeah. for 300 million, million people, tobacco yeah. users. Yeah? yeah. Also, also, the Dental Council of India has mandated to establish one tobacco cessation center in all dental colleges. I mean, how many colleges, dental colleges, would India have? Twenty. I don't know. Man, let me Thirty. Let's say they have a yeah, hundred. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's. It's, you know, it's funny. You have 110 million smokers. You have uh, 300 million tobacco users in total. And you are talking about, I mean, 50 yeah. cessation centers. Yeah, it's cool. In Greece, we have probably half the population of New Delhi. Yeah. Uh, and one hundredth, one, uh, one hundredth of the tobacco users. We have many, many more, I mean, multiple tobacco cessation centers than India. Yeah. And they consider that that's okay. We don't need anything else and we're fine. Yeah. You, I don't understand that. Do, do you believe, Dr. F, that with the, the stance from the WHO, from the World Health Organization, do you believe a lot of that is, is just old school mentality that we just don't know yet and we need to err on the side of caution here because there are tobacco companies that in the last five, six years, have entered the market very, very aggressively. They're producing products, and they have that kind of this stance. Yeah, I'm trying to give them the benefit of the doubt. I, I know I, I don't think so, because they had an even worse stance before uh, tobacco companies entered the cigarette yeah. market, and they just used an additional argument of the tobacco industry's involvement when the industry was involved yeah. uh, and entered the market. So... It's not because of the tobacco industry. It's just that the tobacco industry, um, uh, th their involvement, created an additional argument for the WHO against cigarettes. But it's not that they changed their approach 
after the industry, the tobacco industry got involved into vaping. It, it was even worse before because in 2010, the first um, statement from WHO was ban everything. Yeah. Uh, not even regulated, ban them. Uh, so there has been a small change. But, but uh, while we we're on the topic of India, this is a question from the chat. A large portion of our nicotine does c come from India. So do you see India's stance yeah. on vaping affecting uh, that nicotine source? Not at all. Not at all. Uh, um, it's, uh, compl India is a very small vaping market. Uh, so these companies um, uh, are not uh, really uh, dependent on the Indian market to survive. And you're talking about Alchem. Alchem is the, the biggest company, um, nicotine producing company, which is not only producing nicotine for cigarettes, but also for pharmaceuticals. Uh, and they have been a, a leader in uh, nicotine supplies for cigarettes long before e cigarettes appeared in India. So yeah. uh, I don't think um, anything uh, will change. Let me knock out a couple of the questions of the chat field and then I'll turn it back to you. Um, Here's a question from JP Solari. There are people that are allergic to almost anything in today's world. You know, I mean, you see, you know, lactose intolerant, you know, uh, we, we I mean, very different than when we were growing up. We had no intolerance to anything. But um, uh, it, they will find that they're going to be intolerant to something in vaping as well, too, at some point, one day. How can we prepare for that? Uh, for allergies, strictly speaking about allergies, it's very hard to develop an allergy to any cigarette product because allergies are basically caused by proteins and uh, uh, e-cigarettes are not supposed to contain any proteins. Uh, the exception would be from uh, natural extracts. That's why I have long said, don't use natural extracts. You have to use as flavoring compounds only synthetically made natural compounds. That means vanilline, not coming from an extract from the vanilla plant, but being produced in a lab. It is the same compound, but it's not coming from a natural extract. It's coming from a synthetic uh, production, from synthetically be being synthetically produced in a laboratory. Uh, because with natural extracts, you don't only isolate the key compound that creates the flavoring. Uh, in theory, if you have a synthetically, uh, compound, a synthetically produced uh, nut flavor and you are allergic to nuts, you're not going to develop allergy by vaping a nut flavoring. But only if you use a synthetically produced flavoring. Correct. And I think that most of them are synthetically produced in any case. I don't think that they use extracts from nuts. But uh, if you're using natural extracts, which people think that, oh, that's natural product. So Organic, it's better, yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. better to eat it. It's, yeah. not, it's not at all better. It's much worse to inhale it. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, this misconception is being propagated by companies, by e-cigarette companies, who want to advertise their natural extracts. And it's nonsense, purely nonsense. On, on another topic of a question from the chat, this is from Forti Mariolakis. Can you ask the doctor about vaping and sinusitis? I've been vaping for about 18 months. I find that I only taste the vape flavor for the first couple of puffs, and then my sense of smell shuts down. That doesn't mean that he has sinusitis, first of all. Uh, I don't know if, he, if he's suffering from chronic sinusitis. Yeah. Um, there is a phenomenon called uh, olfactory fatigue. Uh, and it's a phenomenon not only with uh, uh, e-cigarettes, but it's very well um, uh, established in uh, e-cigarettes. Olfactory fatigue means that you get used to the flavoring very frequent, very uh, rapidly. And uh, the only way to uh, resensitize the receptors is to change the flavor. Um, we first noticed that and we had a question in a survey in 2013. Uh, and that was because I have experienced that myself, on myself. And uh, it was reported by something like 50% of the vapors in that survey. Uh, it is a phenomenon not specific to vaping, uh, but we know that when you 
continuously uh, uh, smell the same thing, you lose your sensitivity to that smell, so you start not feeling that you smell it. Imagine a smoker who can't uh, smell his own clothes having this horrible smoke uh, uh, smell. Yeah. Uh, but when you quit smoking, you immediately feel that. That's olfactory uh, tol- uh, fatigue. I call that tolerance at that time. It's, it is olfactory fatigue, and it's an established phenomenon long before a cigarettes were invented. Now, uh, I don't know if he's having any uh, symptoms when he vapes, like a running nose or something else is happening. Maybe he's too sensitive to this olfactory fatigue uh, phenomenon. Maybe it's something else. Um, uh, I don't have enough information to uh, comment. And even if we had enough information, I'm sure we would have a definite uh, response to what is happening to him. Yeah. Phil? Okay. So there was a question before, and I have the same question. I'm not even sure if you're going to be able to comment on this, but we'll give it a shot. Um, you know, salt, nicotine, all the rage now. Uh, a lot of people are using salt, nicotine. I'm, I'm also reading some um, <clears throat> some people that are having problems with salt, nicotine, heaviness of the chest, et cetera, et cetera. What, what is your take on salt, nicotine versus free-based nicotine? Do you have any recommendations? Do you know any, any harms of, of the two? What can you tell us about uh, salt? Um, nicotine salts were only uh, created uh, in order to uh, make uh, high nicotine concentration more palatable, uh, produce less throat heat, uh, less throat and less lung irritation because nicotine at high concentrations uh, produce more throat irritation and more lung irritation, especially when they are uh, mixed in PG-based liquids. Uh, So um, the salts reduced quite a lot this throat irritation, and you can also feel it yourself. Take a 20 milligram free base nicotine and 20 milligram salt nicotine, and you will immediately understand the difference. Or ask people who um, uh, vape uh, through direct lung and ask them uh, what's the maximum concentration of a free base nicotine they can vape, and what's the maximum concentration from a nicotine salt that they can vape they can vape much higher concentration with a nicotine salt. In that aspect, uh, nicotine salts could have a very positive prospect because by increasing your amount of nicotine, your nicotine concentration, you are by definition going to reduce your liquid consumption. And that's uh, your daily liquid consumption. That's a very good thing because you're going to vastly reduce the uh, level of toxin uh, exposure. Uh, It depends only on the amount of liquid you consume and, of course, the composition of the liquid, but mostly on the amount of liquid you consume. So by increasing your nicotine concentration, you will reduce your nicotine, your liquid consumption. You will reduce your exposure to toxins. Um, And the salts make it easier for someone to increase the the nicotine concentration. Now, the problem with nicotine salts is that there are a large number of acids that can be used to create nicotine salts. Uh, creating a nicotine salt is nothing, uh, is no uh, uh, science. It's basically something you can do at home. Um, and there is no control on what kind of acids are used, how much acid is used, and what's the effect of inhaling those acids? Because you are inhaling the acid too. You're not inhaling nicotine in another form only. So uh, some acids may be, bo- may be more irritating and may cause other issues. We don't know when we can't comment because every company is probably having their own formula. So you can't comment, comment in general about sol- salts because you don't know how the salt was prepared. You know what? I, I'll be honest with you, Doctor Phil, with this salt thing. What I what I hear constantly, and I think Phil will 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 agree to that. The electronic cigarette does not have a beginning and an end. You know, like a cigarette, right? So it's it's you know it, a cigarette. You light it up. Icos is timed. It's something that we generally don't have in vaping. What I hear a lot, especially with these high concentration salts, you know, the the, the forty five milligram and above, is that people over vape because there is no beginning and end and since you do have that smoothness of the throat meaning you don't really feel it 
until it hits you, people start getting heavy chest, they start wheezing, they start getting, you know, what we call over nicking, what we used to call over nicking in the early days with a 36 milligram. So I, I think that the education and I think the companies that are putting these products out is not there. There hasn't been testing done. There hasn't been a proper way of marketing the product. All we see, all we see in this industry is like salt. It's the new black. You know, everybody go buy salt nicotine without giving information to the people of exactly what they're inhaling and the pro proper procedure of how to titrate their body through the day to intake a large amount of nicotine. The main purpose of nicotine salts is also to, when we're talking about very high concentrations, above 20 milligrams, let's say, is basically to be used with lower power devices, which is going to make these lower power devices, which are usually smaller, you know, with more elegant designs and so on, they're going to make it more acceptable for a smoker and more likely for a smoker to quit uh, using a low power device with high nicotine concentrations. Why? Because uh, with a high nicotine concentration, a very low aerosol yield, I mean, very low amount of aerosol produced per puff is going to be enough, despite its low um, amount, it's going to be enough to deliver the amount of nicotine that you need as a smoker because it contains a high concentration of nicotine. So instead of using a third generation bulky, heavy device, which looks strange to many smokers, they can use a much smaller device and obtain the amount of nicotine they need. So it has many positives. The thing is that every company uh, fell into this you know, trend. They created their own recipes. No one knows what they put, how much they put, what's the recipe, how has it been tested, how it affects, for example, corrosion of metals, what's happening with all this, nothing. Zero research. That's been happening with the cigarettes since the beginning. They are releasing things without testing them, without Since day one. Uh, anything. I mean, and, and that's why it's very difficult to comment in general about something. Yeah. Because you may have a salt which is perfectly fine. You may have other salts which are not fine. At Bathroom all. salt. <laughs> if you want. By the now, way, I just want to clarify use, for... Uh, now, if you want to use very high nicotine concentrations with, for example, direct lung inhalation, where you can probably use even a 20 milligram salt with DLI, you know, if you take two or three puffs, you're going to get dizzy for sure. Because in two or three puffs, you're going to get in a very short period of time, the amount of nicotine, I mean, within seconds, the amount of nicotine you would get from two or three cigarettes. It's very possible to happen. Uh, so, yeah, it's not enough time to feel the satisfaction that you've taken enough nicotine. You are taking very high concentrations in a very rapid time in a very short period of time. So you already get very high levels in your blood uh, without having the time to uh, let the brain understand that uh, uh, you have satisfied the brain's demand for nicotine. That's yeah. why you feel dizzy. But dizziness and all these things are basically a natural protective mechanism against nicotine intoxication. Yeah. So you will, that's a form of intoxication but it's quite a, 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 a protective form. You know, it makes you understand that you don't need to vape more. You shouldn't vape more because you've already got too much. Yeah. By the way, um, we, we could do like three hours on salt nicotine. That is for sure. Uh, just to yeah. clarify for Cherry, thanks for the super chat. What Dr. F said about the synthetically produced flavors are for inhalation, it is better than uh, naturally extracted flavors. When you're digesting it, when you're eating it, it's completely different. We're talking about two different types of delivery. It's something that we've said uh, many, many times, just to clarify. When we're talking about inhalation, synthetically produced flavors, something I don't know if you guys Listen, saw when them. When people think that a natural product, a natural extract is healthier, is uh, more nutritional in vaping, that's completely stupid because these natural extracts have been made uh, to ingest them, not to, to eat inhale them. them. Right. And right. in fact, you are inhaling many more chemicals that you shouldn't inhale and that don't even offer anything because we know the compounds that create the flavor note that you're asking for. 
And everything else that will be present in a natural extract is there probably without any value in the experience. But it's not, we're not talking about the nutritional value in yeah. order to discuss about natural extracts and potential, you know, nutritional value. Right, right. It's just natural extracts. It's the big organic <laughs> hype in the United States. Everybody wants to do organic, they don't, but, but it doesn't that's, translate that's here. That's been the case since day one <clears throat> that I've dealt with the cigarettes. It's yeah. not something new. I've, I've been telling that since day one. Not only me, many other scientists. But... No one is. By the way, if, if, if just a programming note there, Cherry, if you can go back and look at our video that we shot with Phil at Flavor Art, we talked about that as well, as, like the chemical composition and, and some of the work that Flavor Art is doing for their synthetically made. I mean, it's not a Flavor Art plug; it's just for information uh, yeah. for information purposes. Well, Flavor Art, I mean, they're known to, for building their their flavors molecularly, right? So the, nothing is is naturally extracted. Um, you know, th this is the Smoker Show, so I, I hope that there are people coming into this show, not knowing who Dr. Farsalinos is, right? And I hope that's the case. Um, Dr. Farsalinos, for those people who don't know, what are you a doctor of? I'm a cardiologist by training. I'm okay. doing full-time research since 2012. And you can Google my name and you will find a lot of data about me in relation to e-cigarettes. So I've started working on e-cigarettes since late 2011. I have more than 70 publications in peer-reviewed international scientific journals. I don't think we need to say more. No, we don't. We don't. Well, there, there is one more thing that we want to say because Dimitri asked the, the question earlier, and I just want to, I want to redo it right here in the middle of the show. So you're, you're a doctor of cardiology. You have a, a ton of, of research you know, behind you uh, as far as looking at electronic cigarettes. You have documented in peer-reviewed studies with all of this, with your background, is there, do you have any hesitation in recommending or suggesting an electronic cigarette product to an adult smoker who wants to get off of a cigarette? Not at all. And in fact, uh, I would personally suggest to a teenager who smokes any cigarette if he doesn't want to quit with anything else, to be honest. And that would be illegal, but I would do it. Uh, and I would... Uh, tell their parents to go and get a vape product for them, for a smoking team. Uh, and it's illegal even the, in, in, in the EU. But that's the scientific duty. The problem with regulations is you know that there is no way that through a regulation you are going to determine whether uh, a teenager is a smoker or not and how they're going to use. You can't distinguish a case of a smoker, a teenage smoker, who doesn't want any other help and may uh, be encouraged to use cigarettes as a way of stopping uh, using uh, tobacco products. And from a teenager who wants, you know, out of curiosity or being influenced by others while he, he or she has never smoked, wants to try any cigarette. The regulation cannot distinguish that and you cannot provide a, a police role, let's say, to the shop to understand who the buyer is and make distinctions between one teenager or the other. So I support the uh, smoke, the uh, sales bans to youth, uh, uh, but uh, I uh, personally, on a case-by-case -case basis, uh, if I have a teenager who is not convinced that he should stop smoking, I would tell him that vaping is better than smoking, and that's the truth. Why would I hide the truth? I don't understand studies which raise concerns about the fact that, uh, you know, young people think that e-cigarettes are less harmful than smoking. Why would you raise a concern about that? But that's the truth. You are basically raising a concern about the truth. And if you think that lying to the public, whether it's adults or youth, is going to have a public health benefit, that's a very naive assessment of reality. I've never seen a single case where lying to the public had any public health benefits. On the contrary, it can only have adverse health effects yeah. uh, on an individual level and on a population level. So um, I don't understand why we are concerned that people know the truth. We should be concerned when people don't know the truth. 
and people are entitled to know the truth, whether we like it or not. And the truth is that e-cigarettes are by far not just less harmful, by far less harmful than smoking. And the second truth is that they are not harmless. Yeah. So, so if people know that, that's what they should know. What they decide to do is their uh, job, their choice, as long as it's an informed choice. As long as they have the, the correct information. Right. Uh, just uh, Let me just go through these questions real quick. I want to make sure all the audience questions are answered. Synthetically produced uh, tobacco flavor, better than naturally extracted tobacco flavor? Uh, there is no doubt that uh, naturally extracted tobacco flavor probably is... Uh, there is no doubt probably. Uh, I My... Um, uh, my estimation is that anything that is naturally, uh, that is coming from a natural extract, is going to contain more compounds than a synthetically produced flavoring. Because a synthetically produced flavoring will have the limited number of compounds that create the flavor note. Uh, when you use natural extracts, whether it's a tobacco natural extract or anything else, you are having more compounds in there. You're making the liquid more complex. You're making the flavoring more complex. And you may also have compounds that, as I said, don't uh, influence the flavor note. So they don't create anything in your experience as uh, a vapor. So, yeah. A question on the flavor study that, that, that we did uh, uh, in the summer of uh, 18 and submitted the comment to the FDA. This was a by yeah. far the largest population survey on on flavors, yeah. uh, internet survey on on uh, on flavors. We submitted to the FDA. The question is: Has the FDA acknowledged it? If the FDA has not acknowledged it, do we need to resubmit the, it? The, F, the FDA uh, has it available on their website. I have also the link if you want to. to yeah, I also have uh, have fact, it from your blog I think up here. It would be illegal not to acknowledge it. Uh, but no, I'm not talking about my website. No, I've got it right uh, here. I've got the link to the, to the, to the study that, that we submitted to the FDA. Yeah, if it, I'm not sure if the link from a website is to the FDA, but there is a link on the, in the FDA docket where you can uh, click and get my PDF file yeah. from the FDA website. Yeah, there's a docket number. All you do is just put that number in the regulations.gov yeah. and yeah. then it'll bring it back up, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So I the, can also give you the the website. I have it uh, somewhere. Yeah, so. no, that's fine. I think everybody can find it. Another question that we have is why don't uh, this 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 a, a very good question. Why don't doctors like you and Ricardo Pelosa and Linda Bald and many others get together in some kind of organization? to fight back the misinformation with real science, which I, I know what you're going to answer, but go ahead. Because it needs money. Yeah. Money <laughs> yeah. is going to come from the industry and uh, immediately we're going to be targeted. So, yeah. you know. If I look back at anything, and I think this, we've been because, saying... Because uh, do you think that the WHO, for example, would fund something like that? Of course not. Right, right, right. And, and yeah. that, that's what it all boils down to. I think that if we, if we look back at this industry... One of the biggest mistakes, in my opinion, that we've done is we didn't fund more, more studies. It's something that we've struggled very, very hard over the years is to raise. And I'm not trying to toot mine and Phil's horn, but we've, we've done uh, everything that we possibly have done to raise money for research for Dr. F and for his group. Going back to the to the to the diacetyl study in in 2013, yeah, yeah. With the crowdfunding basically the crowdfunding yeah. would have been completely unsuccessful without your efforts. I think it was in the last two weeks that we managed to raise the yeah. money. And then, and then me and Phil went to China and literally begged the Chinese to get money to do the study on the atomizers. And then we raised money for the comment uh, for the Internet study and all that. But I think that looking back, if you, you know sell the study, a, which was funded by the Tennessee Smoke Free Association, yeah. is now being used in the AFNOR uh, standards for a cigarette, yeah. you know. Oh, I mean, good. that was the impact of the study. Do I get I any was residuals? I by <laughs> immediately, <laughs> and they used yeah. the, the limits that we suggested uh, as a standard now, and probably it's going to be also an ISO standard, to assess the consistency in nicotine delivery from e-cigarettes. 
Yeah. It's good to hear. But I do believe that the industry should do and should have done more to uh, support the concept of harm reduction, especially with the products that we that we produce and that we sell, whether it's liquids or devices or wires. And and, you know, I know I, I see you all the time. Sometimes you get you get attacked by your own community when you say something that makes absolute sense to me. I mean, if somebody asks you about wire and you tell them stay away from this wire, automatically the community goes crazy. Like, oh, you don't know what you're talking about. Like all these Facebook people have basically turned into wire experts or attorneys. On, but, but the truth is that we produce products that nobody has done testing on. So when you ask me, you know, what wire is best? Well, I don't know. Who's done a study on wires? You know, we should have been doing that back in 2012 and 2013 and have that data available now. Uh, can you repeat? Because I, I there was a, a sudden interruption and I couldn't hear the whole. Uh, no, no. So what I was saying is that constantly we get asked questions by the by the by the community and by the by the vapors that we really can't answer because we have failed as an industry to produce more studies that would back up the concept of harm reduction. But, um, the biggest problem with the industry is that it was uh, it has been continuously. Uh, developing, let's call them innovations, uh, which has worked, which have worked, many of them have worked only for a simple reason. Because uh, of very good luck and because by nature the e-cigarette is a very low risk product. Yeah. But not because of their attempts to um, assess the safety of any new innovation. So, um, in my opinion, the industry has been largely quite irresponsible towards the consumer. And not only in terms of the products they develop, but also in terms of the marketing of the products. Uh, unfortunately, and I'm talking about the majority, I'm not talking about everyone, yeah. The exceptions usually verify the rules. But uh, they have basically uh, been self-trapped uh, in an endless uh, effort to satisfy the already established vapors and uh, especially two, or, uh, two to five years ago they completely forgot the smokers who still today represent the vast majority of potential cigarette users and their numbers are much higher than established cigarette users Correct. so i i was um, i could uh, uh, see for several years, uh, a lot of innovation for making already established vapors transition to something, you know, better to a different experience and made products that are totally inappropriate for smokers. And that's why uh, there was, you know, a, a plateau in the adoption of a cigarette yeah. use. Totally agree. Because they forgot the smoking. Also a plateau in the businesses and why the vape shops are not drawing new new customers inside. One last question here from the chat. Um, what is your opinion on the next review of the TPD that is coming uh, next year? I think it's going to be bad. It's going to be bad. Uh, knowing who is responsible for monitoring the TPD. Uh, the latest study that we did on flavors was a rebuttal of a study published by that group. Yeah. Uh, and I don't expect anything good from this group, to be honest. Yeah. They are ideologically, that's the problem, they are ideologically opposed to e-cigarettes. And that's the problem. That's where everything starts. Understood. So bad news for the TPD coming. It's something yeah. that I've been saying as well, too, and something that I'm very, very concerned about. Um, you know, Dr. F., uh, popcorn lung. I mean, we hear it all the time. Popcorn lung, popcorn lung, diacetyl, popcorn lung, uh, regurgitate. Just, just the other day, I, I, I read a, a study that was published on the creme brulee from Juul that it contains acetyls that, that could potentially be uh, lung irritants. So let's just get no, this. No, uh, I, the study was, uh, that study was, I mean, a, a, re, a reinvention of the wheel. Right. Um, I was asked about the study and I sent to someone who asked me, a study uh, saying that glycerol reacts with aldehydes creating acetals. And that study was published in 1965. Uh, it is uh, basic chemistry taught in textbooks. 
that alcohols react with aldehydes and produce acetals. So what they say that for the first time we found acetals being produced from BG and uh, uh, some compounds which are aldehydes like vanillin is like telling you that I, I investigate the composition of water being emitted from a cigarettes and I found that water emitted from a cigarettes contains two uh, hydrogen and one oxygen uh, uh, atoms. I mean, it's stupid completely, completely. It's nothing new. It's exactly what should happen. If they didn't find any acetals, then we would have to uh, raise doubts about their methodology. Because once you mix alcohols like PG and VG with aldehydes, you definitely are going to have some acetals which are not necessarily irritants. Um, but it's a natural occurring chemical reaction. Yeah. Steeping, what you call steeping with the liquids, is nothing more than chemical reactions like this and other reactions that are happening when you mix raw ingredients and that creates other re related compounds. And we know the chemical reactions. If you know the composition, you can understand what the chemical reactions are going to be. It's not, you know, uh, uh, anything crazy. It's not nothing we don't know. You just need to know the composition. Uh, but it's something that uh, we have observed. Yeah. And uh, it's something that we expect to observe. The opposite would have been really weird. Yeah. So popcorn lung. Uh, but uh, acetals yeah. are irrelevant to diacetyl. I mean, right. it's just the term looks similar, yeah. but it's very different. It's not diacetyl is not an acetal. It's yeah. very different. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, when, when we hear constantly, and I think that smokers really, really are afraid of that term popcorn lung, where they say, well, I'm smoking. I might get lung cancer, but I'm not going to get popcorn lung. <laughs> you know, I don't want to have holes in my lungs, basically is what I... And we hear this constantly, especially lately, with this regurgitation of these, this, this term popcorn lung may cause popcorn lung, that we see it constantly in the media here. Yeah. Uh, you know what? Uh, there is no established case of popcorn lung being caused by uh, e-cigarettes. Uh, I raised the issue of uh, the use of diacetylpropanil several years ago because we don't need to wait until a case appears. We need to be cautious because we already have many things that we don't know about flavorings. There is no reason in adding more concerns for something that has raised concerns. Yeah. So why should we wait until we get cases of popcorn lung? We should wait. We should, you know, in that case, we should apply uh, uh, the precautionary principle. And because, why? Because it is applied in a very simple, and e simple, easy, and cheap way. You don't need to spend millions. You don't need to, uh, you know, uh, uh, stop producing products. You don't need to ban e-cigarettes. You just need to remove one ingredient. And yeah. it's something very simple to do. Yeah. Uh, you know, anything in public health is related also to the cost and to the feasibility. You can't have something that is 100% safe. You can't have water that is 100% safe because it would cost billions. That's why you have safety limits for toxins. You can't have an occupational environment which is 100% safe. So you, you're setting safety limits because there are ways feasible and cost-effective ways to improve the occupational setting without being in an environment which is completely uh, uh, with uh, com completely no toxins. Yeah. But you have some safety limits that you should comply. The same should happen with the cigarettes. When you have some chemicals which have raised concern, why are you playing with a devil? You know, why are you risking having some cases with vaping. That's and and, and I think ultimately it boils down to the consumer. Just be, just be informed and then make a decision. Like for me, you know, I don't vape. That, no, that, no, I mean, no, no, no. I completely, I mean, I'm seeing these stupidities, and that's how I call them, yeah. of manufacturers who are reporting on the label that 
this, chem this uh, liquid contains this compound, which is the, the stupidest thing you can do because you're not informing anyone. Right. Because no one knows what these chemicals are. You know, you know because you're reading the studies. Correct. Because you are uh, participating in discussions in forums. The average vapor who has no connection with internet forums, with science and so on, you know what they can see? They can see that a food product contains sugar and he knows that he should avoid sugar. Right. He sees that a product contains nuts and he knows that he's allergic to nuts, so he will not use, he will not eat this food product. He has no idea what diacetyl is. He has no idea why there is, uh, uh, in a small letter, a sub, a footnote that this product contains diacetyl. He doesn't know why it is there. He doesn't know what it means. So that's absolutely zero information. Right. You just put it on it's the label, excuse, but there's no. It's an excuse. And it's complete stupidity. Yeah. You're not informing anyone. You're just supposedly covering yourself, but you're not doing anything because no one knows what this is. The only information that you provide is for someone who may be, and that's extremely rare, rare to non-existent, allergic to the compound. But yeah. it's stupid. And it, I would call it a joke. But it's not at all a joke because they are using it as an argument that, oh, we are informing people. And you're not informing people because people don't know what this uh, warning. It's not even a warning. They just mention it as a footnote. And no one knows what that means. No one knows what the compound is. No one knows, knows of any potential concerns that have been raised. It doesn't matter if it's coming from other sources. So you are providing zero information. Yeah. It's like it's not there. It's nonsense with capital letters. Yeah. Uh, Phil, jump in. All right. I've got um, just one more question that I want to ask, and then uh, we'll let Dr. F go because I know it's uh, what, 5 o'clock in the morning for yeah. him right now, and yeah. I appreciate your time, Dr. Yeah. Um, my last question is, you, you know, we've gone from uh, – no sweeteners to kind of the overuse of sweeteners in a lot of uh, e-liquids uh, these days. What's your take on um, on the use of sweeteners in e-liquids and is there potential harm there? What are the sweeteners that are used? That's a question. And how much do you use? Uh, there was a study which raised concerns about sucralose um, uh, because sucralose contains a nitrogen molecule which basically makes... Uh, the compound not being absorbed from the gastrointestinal tract when you eat it. Uh, but at the same time, it provides the sweet taste, but you don't absorb it. So you're not getting any calories. You're not increasing your blood sugar levels and so on. But with inhalation, it's a different story. And with inhalation, you also have the heat, uh, uh, the heating process. Um, uh, but still, I'm not sure how relevant is the study. I have the impression, but I haven't tested any liquids to see how much uh, sucralose they put in the liquids. But in the study, they use very high doses. Maybe that's too much for the e-liquids, but still, I have no idea how much they use. And I don't know if they use any other sweeteners, too. So uh, if we're talking about natural sweeteners, like glucose, fructose, and so on, we know pretty well that heating these compounds generates aldehydes, mainly acetaldehyde, but not only. So, and that's not good. Uh, uh, so, uh, but it depends on what they use and how much they use. We don't know. So, uh, again, everyone is using whatever they think and whatever uh, tastes good according to their own personal taste. So, who knows? You know what? I've said from 2000, since 2012, uh, the simpler the liquid, the better. Unfortunately, the trend over all these years is to make flavors more complex. More complex, why? Mainly because everyone wants to create a unique flavor. So you don't even have characteristic flavors today. Uh, I mean, in the past, 
you could buy I, watermelon flavor, yeah, Dr. F, flavor. Let me interrupt no, you. It's a mix of uh, some sweet flavor with some fruit flavor, with some nuts, with some tobacco. You can't even say what if this the flavor you're using has any characteristic note in most cases. It has several notes, not one. And this has increased by far the complexity, and that's not good for yeah. safety. You know, it's it's funny here you said this. I was in Crete, um, I, and I'll show it after you leave. I got some some stuff to show. But I was in Crete, and I was talking to a guy that's 60 years old, uh, got the zenith to quit smoking, and he told me exactly the same thing because I think that the industry, once again, started going into this gourmet and mixing of a, a lot of flavors for the existing vapors that were looking for those high waters. You can determine the flavors and all that. But for a smoker, you know what he told me? 65 years old, he's like, I want to come inside of here and buy a strawberry. Just a strawberry. I can't find it. No, There's yeah. 400 flavors inside here. I can get strawberry yeah. cheesecake. I can get strawberry, you know, with 17 exactly. other things. Yeah. I can't can get a simple with flavor. A lot of other stuff inside. Yeah, he can't find <laughs> a simple strawberry. He cannot yeah, yeah. find it. So, Which, you know, I thought, I thought it was, it was not the case in 2012, 2013. Correct. Uh, after that, you know, the flavoring started becoming more and more complex. And now you're in a situation where if you ask uh, in a survey, whether you're using sweet flavors, fruity flavors, nutty flavors, beverage flavors, it's very hard to respond because you're using a sweet flavor which also contains some fruits or which also may contain tobacco. No. And it's a complex situation. You don't have any characteristic notes now. You have many notes in one flavor, which means by definition that the flavoring is much more complex. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, just a, a, a funny uh, question. Uh, do you DIY your liquid, Dr. F, or do you buy commercial? I buy commercial. It's, are, you, are you able to find, because I know you're a high nick vapor, are you able to find anything anymore that's, that's in your nicotine in, uh, strength? Uh, in, uh, for most liquids, I have to go down to 12 milligrams because with the TPD, many reduced the variability of different nicotine concentrations. And basically... Uh, with the exception of tobacco flavors, it's very hard to find any other flavor like a fruit flavor in 18 milligram liquids. Yeah. It's not as bad as in the US or as bad as in some vape uh, expos where I can't even find any liquid that <laughs> yeah. I can vape. Neither can I. But, um, you know, it's, uh, I, I definitely noticed a reduction in the availability of high nicotine liquids after the TPD. Yeah, absolutely. Phil, anything else that you we've got? We really got to let the doctor go. No, That's I know. I, <laughs> so I assume that uh, you're a, you're a free base or a standard e-liquid uh, e user, not us. Yeah. 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 So because we, I want the throat hit. Uh, yeah. It would be useless for me to use an 18 milligram salt. Uh, I, I don't like it. I've tried it. I don't like it. Yeah, yeah, I'm in that boat. Yep. Yeah, def definitely in the throat <laughs> hit boat. Uh, but uh, listen, Doctor F, I I sincerely want to thank you. I mean, for coming on the show, obviously, and answering all these questions. But I want to thank you for because you don't get recognized enough. I think within our own industry as much as you should, because I, I, I think when when, when you, well, I think <laughs> I think when, I think when you're talking about vaping, I think we really need to be more honest as an industry. I think we need to find all the good that comes with it, but we also need to point out the bad. And it seems like when we do good, everybody's like, "Oh yeah, you're the greatest." Hey, vape bromance, you're the best. But when me and Phil raise the, the I'm like, "Why are you putting the sea liquid?" up to six milligram only, we all get attacked. Oh, you guys are old vapors and nobody vapes 12 milligram anymore. And, and we get attacked as well too. And I know you get attacked when you raise these questions, but I think it's very, very important to be raising these questions within this industry to see some change. And ultimately to me, and the reason why we do this show is because there's still millions of smokers still out there and they need to have products uh, to help them. You know what? I'm looking at the big picture and the big picture is the millions of smokers. Right. I mean, it's more than a billion worldwide who continue to smoke. And these are uh, by far more than the established vapors. Vapors represent the minority. And if people want to uh, focus only on the established vapors, they're just focusing on the very 
small proportion of their potential customer base if we want to talk about the industry. Uh, and that's why at the end, basically, they are putting a bullet uh, in their head yeah. uh, by themselves, unfortunately. That's not something new that has happened, uh, that has been happening over many years. Unfortunately, it's a short sighted strategy and policy uh, that, the, that many companies have developed. And eventually, they're just competing for the established market. They're not yeah. competing for increasing the market share by, you know, uh, uh, attracting more vapors from the vast smoking community globally. They're just uh, focusing only uh, on the established uh, vapors, which are yeah. the very small minority. Yeah, okay. uh, indeed, what indeed. It could have been. Closing thoughts, uh, Phil, for Dr. F? Uh, no closing thoughts other than thank you so much, Dr. F, for joining us. I know it's very, very late, and, and we do hope you come back uh, on the show in the future. Okay. Uh, maybe, uh, maybe change next, the time. Next. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> maybe we're in Greece. We can do a smoker show from Greece and have Dr. Yeah. F live with us, and, and, and then we can, we can spend a little and bit we'll more ask time. Feel to stay up at 4 a.m. and uh, join the. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Well, that's, that's normal in Greece. You have oh, yeah, that's what time we go out in Greece. What are you talking about? Yeah, you know, nothing happens before 3 a.m. anyway. So One time I took him out, Dr. F, in, in Greece, and we left this club at 9 o'clock in the morning. We literally came out of the club, and it was daylight. People were going yeah. to work, and he was like, oh, my God, what just happened? <laughs> so uh, welcome to Greece. That's the way it is. Yeah. But uh, yeah. e-cigarette-research.org e is Dr. F's blog where he posts all his scientific findings and all the comments that he makes on particular studies that come out. We just ask you to be informed. When you see a bad study, go out there and do some research. Find the rebuttals that Dr. F is posting and other scientists that support vaping as well, too. And you, as an adult smoker, try to make an educated decision uh, if this product is right for you in order for you to get off combustible tobaccos. This is the, the point that I want to make. So thank you, Dr. F, for coming on. We certainly appreciate okay. it. Bye. All right. Let's take a little quick break, and we'll be right back. Okay. See you. Bye, Phil. Thank you so much. We should be getting close to uh, to the make the switch uh, um, testing. Uh, I don't I don't know how that's going, but yeah, we're, we're very very excited to to see what they did with these tobacco flavors and uh, and test them out and try to find something. Speaking of uh, make the switch, I know uh, Jennifer just put in uh, her uh, offering, uh, her entry, and um, you know Jennifer uh, was here at the house. Uh, I think it was like the first Tuesday that you went to Greece, and yeah, I had her. Yeah, uh, I saw it. I saw it live, yeah. and it was really, really good. Uh, she's a wonderful, sweet person, uh, and, she and I know she gave you some liquids for me, which I haven't seen anyway. She messaged me. She's like, "Hey, did you try that?" I was like, "He hasn't sent me anything. He kept them all for himself." Uh, did you want? Did you want me to send them to you? Well, I mean, I'm not going to see you to the end of the month, but well, uh, no. But but you know what? I'm going to bring them to you because I have a bunch of your liquids from Jennifer. Uh, I have a couple of your t-shirts and I have your bathing suit as well, uh, all here <laughs> at the other uh, house. You left everything here the last night we were. Oh so, boy. Uh, um, so Jennifer made me some liquids, right? Yeah. Th this is how bad I am at 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 promoting and sponsors sponsorships, yeah. right? Because I'm promoting liquids that you, you can't even buy. Um, this Maui uh, Pina Breeze, uh, I did enjoy that, but this mango peach gummy, well, you could tell by how much is left, uh, how much I enjoyed that. This is nice. so good. And she just sent me, because she was vaping something that she was, uh, and and I she let me try it, and I really liked it. And she made me some uh, 4 mouth to lung 12 milligram, and it's this strawberry 
coconut milk that is just so damn good. So damn good. And I'm not really a bakery kind of flavor guy yeah. um, or creams or custards or anything, but boy, am I enjoying this. And I've got it in the little gem pen. Just what a good vape. What, yeah. Just what a good vape. And, you know, I, I read somewhere that somebody complained about the flavor on this thing. I, I don't know what people are looking for. I, for I really don't. I really don't understand. I think that the, the, the newest the gem pen that that um, that Inican released is is a fantastic product for somebody to start off. Twenty bucks. Uh, you get a ceramic coil. You know, I've told you in the past, I'm not a ceramic fan. But on this one, you just uh, right off the bat, get great flavor for it. Really, really well, cheap. I, I and said that in the review. Way. I fully expected. Fully expected to not like that ceramic. Yeah, form. yeah. Fully, fully expected to not like it. But. Yeah, but it's worked out very well. And I think that I think that you see vapors using these products, and sometimes they're a little bit overcritical because they're vapors. But I think again, people forget what mostly Inican does, and Inican tries to put out products to help people quit smoking. Because we're trying to focus on the people that have not tried vaping yet. So if you're a 10-year vapor and you pick up a gem pen, yeah, you might be a little bit overcritical because it doesn't have, you know, 17 settings in the menu setting or you can't take it to 90 watts or whatever. But I think that that's not fair. That's not a fair estimate. We should look at these products from the standpoint of somebody that's not tried. The gem pen was not made for me. Uh, even though you know I'm using it, you're using it as well too. But um, but it's made for people that are transitioning. Make it easy, inexpensive, good, satisfying, good throat hit, good flavor. Uh, but you know it is what it is. I do want to talk a little bit about um, you know what happened in Greece. I I'm gonna show you some pictures here. I did visit a lot of the the, the stores that that um, that work with me and. Uh, and, and try to promote this tobacco harm reduction. This guy here, Nikos, uh, he's in Ladisai. His store is just absolutely fantastic. 60% starter kits uh, in his stock field. It was just amazing. Wow. Just a down-to-earth guy. Has helped you know hundreds and hundreds of people in his uh, hometown there to, to quit smoking. Hey, uh, by the way, uh, I'm just curious. When you met these people, did they all ask where I was? Yeah, yeah, everybody did, and everybody wants to. Everybody wants to come back to, uh, and, and when, when we go back to September to go. It's impossible to go see everybody, and I promise you that when we go, we're going to take a few days and 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 try to relax, and we will. Uh, but a lot of people do look look up to you and and uh, and appreciate your work, and they want to have you at their stores and and. What I did in Crete, I went to Crete for vacation with my family, but I try to get a smoker show appearance there. And Petros, the guy that owns Vaport, just a beautiful, beautiful store, did a did a a, a smoker show live kinda at his store where we invited uh, smokers to come out and try vaping. And uh, I'll show you a few pictures from that, and I have a little video yeah. ready as well too. But this is uh, Petro, and this is all his staff, and this is his lovely wife. Um, we, we had people that came and we had five smokers transition to vaping that night, which was fantastic. All of them older, three of them women, which was really, really nice as well, too. But I do want to uh, uh, recognize what Petros did. This here is at Max uh, Radio Station 100.2, which is the radio station that's heard in the entire island. For people that don't know, Crete is one of the biggest islands in Greece. And what he did the day before the event is he arranged... Um, for me to make an appearance at this radio station to talk about vaping. And we had a really nice conversation with a host, about 45 minutes. Uh, she's not a vapor or a smoker, but the, the whole point was this is very, very critical when you're getting out there to talk about vaping to give the right information. So our right. goal was, no matter if you come to Vaport or any other vape store in Crete, to understand what vaping is. So I was really, really appreciative that he gave me that that uh, that opportunity to do it. These, these are my guys uh, at Liquid Puff, so I wanted to just give them a little shout out. But I do want to play this really quick video. It's just a two minute video of the event that it was done very, very nicely, very, very professional. And uh, and the fact that we converted five people there, uh, actually two of them with beeps and both of the beeps went to women. Very, very surprising on that, too, because generally they will want something that's smaller. But here's just a little video from uh, from the event. By the way, do you miss uh, pastry stuff with uh, cheese and meats? 
That's what you can miss that a lot. This guy here that I'm signing his Zenith, this guy, 65 years old, man, so appreciative of that he found that tank and was able to quit. He was the one that was looking for the strawberry and couldn't find anything. I just want to make a little side note. And the woman that you saw before with a blue dress on, just a lovely lady, her husband's a vapor, or her boyfriend is a vapor. And, you know, he had his usual setup of three milligrams. And she kept telling me, you know, I want something tight. I want throat hit and all that. And she ended up getting the beep, too. So it was, it was really, really cool. So yeah, I just want to thank the guys for having me down there. Every, you were missed. Everybody I did ask about you, but it was just a great time. I really enjoy. I wish more stores would do stuff like this, meaning let's five people at a time. That's all you need. You don't have to convert 100 people in one night so you can take the time to sit down with them. And, I, and, and people were coming to me and I was spending 30 minutes with them, Phil, and it was like I have loved it. I can't hear you. You're muted. Yeah, I don't want to get in trouble when I'm typing. Um, you know what else I noticed about that that I really, really liked, right? Is that, yeah, there were a couple clips in there with, you know, you were making your tiny little mouth to lung clouds, and there were other people making sure. bigger clouds, right? But talk about classy clouds, right? Even, like, just the, the style of the event, the look of the event, the people that are at the event, the way the event was presented, Right. Just classy, 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 classy. Yeah, yeah. And it shows that that vaping can be classy and vaping can be adult and vaping can be mature, even with the clouds. Yeah. Even with the clouds. Right. It's just it's so refreshing to see that. It really is. I highly suggest that vape shops here in the United States do events like this. You just don't see them anymore. You see customer appreciation days for vapors. You do see you see cloud competitions. You see that. But how about, you know, convert a smoker uh, event at your store every couple of months. Do events like this. Cater it. Make it adult friendly. Make, make people come back into the vape shops. Make, make it where they're not intimidated by the look or whatever you're doing in the vape shop. I don't understand why, Phil. It really boggles my mind why vape shops are not taking the opportunity to invite smokers back into their stores. And to me, it has to boil down to you see the difference between what Europe is doing and what the United States is doing is completely opposite. And you know, you've seen it, and you're going to see it when we go back in September. You've seen how the shops in Europe operate, and especially in Greece. We've never been to a vape shop where we said to ourselves, I, don't, I mean, we went on a tour of five, six vape shops in a row. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. But I, I don't believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, that you ever looked at a vape shop or an event and said, oh, this is not something that adults would enjoy. No, uh, none. N not, only, not only that, but, but even the people that are running the, the, the shops, either running the shops or manning the shops, right? Very mature professional um you know most of them you know decent looking you know well dressed um how about the word approachable right yeah, approachable that's a, and, that's and not good. intimidating in any way shape or form i i find that I, I there's a hesitation i think here in the united states a little bit about you know we gave away some product there you know we gave away some some devices and stuff like that i don't see anything wrong with that 
you know, if, if, if you want to make a purchase because it's illegal here, obviously, you know, you can charge a dollar or two dollars or have them buy a bottle of liquid. But it's just marketing. And in my opinion, if you get one person that's going to quit smoking with you, he's going to come back. He's going to buy liquid. He's going to buy coils. You know, he's going to bring you new customers because you help him quit smoking. What, at what point in our industry did that stop being a, a marketing tool? Forget about the, the health benefits and everything else that goes along with it. But even just the marketing tool to draw new customers into your store. You know, I, I hear it all the time. I go, well, I don't, you know, it might be a vapor that comes and fakes me to get a free device. Who cares? If you, if you give him a free EQ, he's going to have to buy pods at some point anyway for crying out loud. You know, I just don't get that. I don't buy that. that that's not doable anymore. I, I truly hope, by the way, at ECC coming up at the end of the month, me and Phil are doing the presentation on the Back to Basics. And if you're a vape shopping, you're in the area, come by and listen to it. Because it's something that we highly suggest in our presentation is try to do these events to draw new, stop doing events that only cater to your existing customers or only cater to the existing cloud chasers or the existing advanced vapors. Do more events to bring new traffic into your store and ultimately help convert more smokers. Yeah, no, I completely agree with you. You know, I've often said that we work in, in a very unique industry, an industry where you make money by helping people live longer, right? Yeah. It, it just one goes with the other. Um, and to not see that, to, to, to not be a, a vape shop that doesn't have some kind of monthly invite a smoker in for a day. Yeah. Let's have a let's have a training course for smokers. Let's let's give some facts to smokers. Um, and, and, you know, we've often said that you, you can't say, yeah, thanks to the FDA, freedom of speech. We can't say that it's safer than smoking, even though it is. But we can say that, well, according to the Royal College of Physicians and according to this and according to that and according to this, we can do that. Right. Yeah. And, so, and, why, and, and I'm at that point where I don't really care for you. I went on Facebook. Yeah, the no, other, I, I agree with you. I, I, I went I on Facebook, Facebook the other day and gave away four Juno kiss just on my Facebook live. And I was like, listen, you're a smoker or you have somebody in your family. I'm just going to give it to you now. I don't care. What do you I would love for the FDA to 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 to, to uh, I don't know, send me a warning or whatever. I don't have to, to uh, show up at some hearing to justify what I'm saying. I have the data and I have the science to back it up. So, oh, by the way, uh, Daniel's in the chat. Hey, Daniel, I have this lovely uh, screenshot of Daniel here set up. Uh, he just did a review on the Adept and uh, Slide. Look at that. Hey, feels good, bro. Feels good. Uh, bro. Anyway, what up, bro? Look at him. He looks, is he <laughs> high as a kite? Or I, don't what he's vaping. I don't know what he's vaping in that slide what? tank. But yeah, I tell the, you what, I, what I really enjoy about uh, Daniel's videos is that every time you go there, he's got a completely different hairstyle. You know? I know. That, I like, know. He's so trying. He's got something going on different there. I think it's, we've given him a psychological problem, and he's trying to find. <laughs> he's trying to find the, the different hairstyle. But the Adept was released uh, a couple of weeks ago. Very, very popular. It's it's getting a lot of traction. And again. You know, when, when you look at you know, waterproof, dustproof, and shockproof, all those are pretty good marketing tools, you know. Uh, uh, but the, the whole point of the Adept uh, paired up with a slide tank, I have the Zenith on mine because I just think it looks better. Um, the whole point of the Adept is to make it easy for people to vape, right? right. You, if you're an existing vapor and you look at that screen, you're like, oh, what is that? You know, that's outdated. That's, uh, that's 2012. I think that's unfair. I really is. I think if you look at the system and you think about a volume meter, and this is the way that I suggest to the stores because I started carrying it in Greece as well too and distributing it to the stores there. And every shop owner that I talked about feel, you know what I told them? Forget about this. Forget about these numbers that are down yeah. here. Forget about all that. Yeah. You, you don't just for, just tell your customers, you know, your volume, how you open it in your car or in your stereo system. This is exactly what the screen is. You want it a little bit warmer, crank the volume up. You want it a little bit cooler, crank the volume down. And I think for somebody that's starting, I think this is what the, the, they want. They want ease of use. They want auto detect of this, uh, this atomizer. They don't have to think about ohms and resistances and wattages. And, you know, one of the biggest problems that I have feel with Victoria from New York, you know, the vapor that I helped like five years ago, and she still have troubles with a chroma. She puts it in in temperature mode all the time. And if, for the last, I'm telling you, I look back at the messages five times. She's messaged me. It's stuck on Fahrenheit. How do I get it out? And I'm like, oh, you press this. And pre every time I tell her that. It, it, and it's funny that you say that because I gave uh, my landscaper a chroma kit. And they, they, a few days, they, they come back and they're doing work and, and, and the guy was still using it. And, uh, the, the girl, she was, she was smoking a cigarette. She's according to her, she had a bad week. Okay. I'm working on her. Yeah. But anyway, he's like, it's a little strong. I don't understand why it's strong. And I looked at it. Sure enough, it's in temperature control. Right. right. So it's just pushing power, trying to get that, that resistance to increase. And 
of course it's not happening. So right. yeah, I mean, I think simple products are good. And, 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 and why do we keep, go ahead. And I find myself, I mean, I'm, I find myself after 10 years uh, feel using these products as well, too. It's just simple. It's easy. It's good flavor. I get my throat hit. I'm done. I don't have to do anything. Just change the coil. I put it on. I get two days battery life with a 1.6 home coil. I'm done. I'm old. I don't have time, you know. I mean, as much as I like the, you know, the new and the flashy and I like playing with stuff like that. If I if, if you look at my desk now, there's just a variety of, of devices on here. If I'm going to get up and leave, I'm probably going to grab this or, or a beep or something like that. It's just that I think that the overcomplication of vaping has hurt the entry level point of the vapor going in. And, yeah. and I don't see that. I mean, in Europe, I'm telling you, I go to these stores and I see at least a balance of 40 percent starter kits to 60 percent advanced user to today. I see that some stores heavily more heavily, some stores a little bit less depending on the, you know, what the store uh, uh, you know, theme is. But all of the stores have a great selection, at least a selection for, for starter kits and a great selection for mouth-to-lung vapors of people that enjoy higher nicotine. Yeah. No, and we don't I, see I that in the United States, period. I agree with you. Hey, you. You know, what's interesting, too, is like for how much I used to build back in the Odysseus and the, um, uh, the Ziadi days and, and the early K-Fun days, that's how little I build today, yeah. uh, only because I just I don't have the time or sure. maybe even the interest anymore at this point. I, I find myself rebuilding when I have to do a review uh, to, to review a product to get an idea of how the product works and when I'm working on our prototypes. Really? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've been using the Aris uh, 2 prototype. I've been, I've been vaping it through the show and stuff like that. Obviously, I and I, and I enjoy finding builds that give you that flavor and all that. But for daily harm tobacco reduction use, this is, this is I think, where, you, where those two, you know, that intersection comes where you kind of veer off into the hobbyist side and then you, you veer off to the side that, listen, I just want, don't want to have a cigarette. And, and, and people like our wives is the prime example. I see what my wife uses on a daily basis. She'll get up, she'll pick it up, she'll put her 12 milligram inside and she's not going to smoke. And to me... We just don't spend enough time uh, with with we don't we don't spend enough time as an industry and as a community thinking about people like that. We think about our own circle and what we see online constantly and what we see in those vape shows and that it's all about the advanced hobbyist user. And uh, and I think that's hurt us ultimately. Let me uh, play a quick commercial for our other sponsor real quick. And we're going to come right uh, back. And a question from the chat. The mod that we're showing is the new Adept. Uh, this is by Inikin and me and Phil. This is all internal. Ba well, Phil, you're the tech guy, so give a little information on the Adept. And then you could go watch uh, Daniel's review or Phil's review and get more information on it. Yeah, Daniel, by the way, I agree with you on the battery. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, anyway, it's a very, very simple device. Uh, it auto senses the coils depending on uh, what coil, what Z coil that you're using, uh, either in the Zly tank or the, uh, the Zenith tank or really any tank for that matter, uh, really not a sub-ohm type device. Uh, it'll adjust your wattage range, okay? So there's two wattage ranges. If you're above an ohm, it, it'll do one range. If you're below an ohm, it'll do a different range. Uh, and then once you're in the range, you have four settings uh, for that range. If you see the settings right there, very, very simple, very, very easy to use. Just one control button there. When you do fire the device, let me get that back on screen for you. Uh, you'll see where it's firing, You'll see the range where it's firing. There's a little purple arrow down there. Uh, and then you'll see the, the status of the battery, too. Uh, it's got that usual green, yellow, uh, red status uh, for uh, Inikin. Um, what is it? Uh, I forget what the percentages are. Uh, three click on and off. One, two, three. That's going to shut it down. Three clicks, turn it back on. One, two, three. Um, got a really nice kind of soft, rubbery feel uh, uh, cover to it. 
Uh, on the bottom, it does have the wattage ranges. I'm not even going to quote them because I don't want to talk about the wattage ranges on this device. I don't think it should be talked about really um, because that's not what this device is really designed for. Uh, it is IP67. Correct. Um, Daniel, I didn't, I don't, we did not, this is, this is an R device. R, it's our tank, but um, I don't know about the 510 connection. I, I know I've had this underwater. It has continued to work. Um, and that's it. Little uh, cover here for the port on the bottom uh, for the battery. And it comes in a whole bunch of different colors for you. Yeah, it comes in some really, really sexy colors. I, 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 I must have uh, admit that. Let me take a couple of questions here from the chat. Um, what Z coil do you guys prefer? Meaning me and you. Um, you know, it was the 1.6. If I'm not using the 1.6, I'm using the 0.8. I'm not a huge fan of the, the Plex coil. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I, I mean, for me, when I'm using a little bit higher VG liquids, I prefer the 0.8. Um, but for for some of the higher PG liquids, or if I'm using the um, the Silk Nick from from Canada, the 20 milligram, I prefer the 1.6. Like that's what I have in my beep. I have the 1.6 ohm coil with a 20 milligram um, Silk Nick from Canada on one hole. Especially when I travel, it's just a fantastic vape. I get enough nicotine, good satisfaction, good throw hit. I'm very very happy with that setup. Uh, but in generally, like when I'm trying liquids, I got these new liquids in from Tea Time. No s added sweeteners uh, to try them out. Um, so I'm using the, the 0.8 ohm coil with that. I think the 0.8 across the board is the overwhelmingly flavor favorite. And we also are testing a couple new coils out as well, too, that, that are going to be coming out um, probably around the VOP Expo in Paris in October. There's a few new items that are coming out that are going to be launched in Paris as well, too, uh, under that line. Um, yeah. That, that's a question for you, Dimitri, from John Caps. What's the question? Do you uh, see this still going? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think I, did. I, th I don't think the industry is going anywhere. I'll be honest with you. No matter what happens with the FDA. And I, if, by the way, next Monday, I'll be on with uh, Suck My Mod, Matt. And I'll talk a little bit because this is not really a political show. But if you're a vapor, tune in next Monday. I'll be on with uh, Suck My Mod, Matt. On his live show, and I'm going to talk extensively about that. And then after Matt, the same night, Monday, I'll be on with the Amigos, Tres Amigos company, uh, talking more political stuff as well. Too. But yeah, I don't think everything is going uh, anywhere. We've got a telephone call, Phil, finally, 419. Let me just uh, answer it, though, here. I agree with you on the uh, the Decodes uh, board. It is a great, great board for uh, TC. Sure. It's a very, very elegant board, the way it does everything. Sure. All right. So here we go. 419, you're on the air with Phil and Dini. Hello. Four Hello. Minutes. Yeah. Hey. Wow, this is surreal. Oh, no, come on. It can't be that surreal. What's up? Who's? What's your name? Where are you calling from? No, you guys are like, you guys are lifesavers, man. Well, we appreciate that. Uh, what's going on? Um, actually, I called because uh, first off, to thank you. Just if it wasn't for your Zenith tank, I never Ten got off seconds. Cigarettes. Yeah. Ignore the the British lady that's talking in the back. Go ahead. I said I wanted to say thank you. If it wasn't for your guys' Zenith tank, I never would have got off the cigarettes. Man, that's amazing. Thanks a lot. I appreciate How long did you smoke for? Um, I'm 27. I been started smoking when I was 12 years old. Mm -hmm. Quit for about a year or so now, but I've been vaping as a dual user for two years before that. Yeah. What, what were you missing before? It was very hard because yeah. a lot of shops, like you guys always say, don't offer higher nicotine and they always try to sell high wattage sub ohm stuff. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I'm actually calling because I have a mother that's mm -hmm. um, really struggling with yeah. uh, COPD mm -hmm. and uh, smoking two packs a day or roll your own cigarettes. And I wanted to ask you guys some options because every shop I go to carries, like, they carry tobacco, but it's always a uh, more of a sweet, like a, a caramel tobacco or a, yeah. a raisin or something that's not like a just a tobacco. Yeah. Uh, feel and if I, it is, it's... It, yeah, we, we understand yeah, your, your struggles. Yeah, I mean, we, we, de we definitely understand. So this is for your mother? Yes. All right, let's, uh, let's do something for your mother. What's your name? Derek Overby. All right, Derek, here's what we're going to do. Uh, let's get your mother out a device. Maybe we'll do the, uh, the new Inigin... Um, 
uh, 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 gem, gem pen. pen. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I think that's a good idea. And we'll do some uh, we'll do some tobacco flavored uh, e liquid from some of our sponsors, and we'll uh, we'll get that out in the mail to you. Just um, can you contact me on uh, on Facebook, uh, Derek? That I follow you all the time. You're 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 like an idol. Aww. Aww. I appreciate that, brother. All right, yeah, we'll take care of your mom. What's your mom's name? Robin. Robin. Okay, Robin. We're gonna take. We're gonna try to take care of you. Maybe get you off of some of those cigarettes, and uh, we'll get some uh, some gear out. Yeah, okay? some of the some of the Patriot and some of the Lunar Rover uh, e liquid, which is one of our sponsors, is a very very good authentic tobacco flavor that doesn't have all that other stuff that generally you'll find at a vape store. And I think I th- straight up approach, especially for roll your own cigarette user. I think a straight up approach with a BLK or the GLD from Lunar Rover in the gem pen, I think it's a really good, fantastic combo. And, I, and the gem pen is small enough. If she's rolling her own cigarettes, she's used to something that's very, very small. The gem pen is fantastic. It gives it a really good flavor, easy to feel. So let's just get it out to you and then just do us a favor, uh, Derek, in a couple of weeks, call back and, uh, and let us know how it went for her. And if it doesn't work, we'll find something else. We'll, we'll try to keep going until we get, you know, I mean, somebody that has COPD is definitely on top of our list trying to help him quit smoking. Well, uh, not to be all sappy, but God bless you guys. I didn't take the phone call to actually go through. I kind of just gave it a shot. But that was that's one of the coolest things. And you guys are awesome. God bless you. Thank you. We appreciate it, Eric. And congratulations really on that, being uh, on being smoke free. Have a wonderful evening. And listen, you know, we can't do this without our sponsors. So I, 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 a lot of people give us praise. But the truth is that, you know, go ahead. Hey, just one second. I want to answer uh, the vapist because uh, there was somebody was asking me uh, what level, uh, what color uh, I was vaping this at. I'm, I'm in the middle on the green. Uh, and then they were asking if that is the four mil pod. That is the four mil pod. Uh, we have gone to mass production for it finally, and it should be hitting the stores in about uh, two weeks. Okay, thanks for your patience on that. I'm vaping on blue. You're vaping I, on blue, but I got the 1.6. I'm calling there. So. Oh, there you go. I got the 0.8, and I'm on medium. Yeah, and we do apologize for the four meals taken. Uh, it's way beyond our control. Sometimes people think that me and Phil are literally in China making these. But it doesn't work like that. So this is a third prototype that we went through. We just wanted to make sure that it didn't have any issues. And it's finally in production. Within a couple of weeks, it should be coming out for those of you that want a four-meal pod for the beep. Right? Yes. That is correct. That is correct. All right. What else? So what were you going to say? You said we got a call? or No, no, no. I just wanted to say thanks to Derek for calling in. It's always refreshing. I, I had this conversation the other day on Facebook with uh, with um, with somebody in Greece. that worked. She sent me a message that... She finally quit smoking with a Zenith. And to me, yeah, I mean, every, all those messages that come in are very, very humbling. And we appreciate that. Ultimately, though, it's you that made the switch. We just provided the tool, but you made the decision to get a, a cigarette. So uh, you need to get a lot of praise as well to you, Derek. And thanks for trying to help your, your mother as well, too. Um, Absolutely. Because that's, that's very, very important for us as well, too. It is kind of why we do the show. It is. It is. And, uh, and then when you see stuff like this that pops up that says, you know, uh, urging people not to vape, it's just aggravating. It's aggravating for us. So if, if you have seen that story, just send people to watch the replay of the show and listen to what Dr. F said and look at the we've got 33 episodes up there already from last year. Uh, and as we're moving into season two, we did get a lot of comments on the last episode that we did. And we're going to try to focus a little bit more on this, trying to have guests on to talk about vaping, debunk some of these myths, try to go back to the basics once again, talk about issues that you're going to run into. You're always going to run into issues with vaping. There's no device. There's nothing that you're going to buy that's electronic off the shelf. And it's just going to work beautifully for hey, you know, the rest hey, of your life. Can I tell you a story? Quick story. Sure. I, I had a, a Zenith, a Zenith leak liquid all over my face the other day from what i forgot to close it back up yeah. after i filled it yeah <laughs> i swear to god I swear. yeah i i, I, I filled it up and the port just happened to be facing my mouth directly so i'm just 
vaping and all the liquid just comes out. I'm like, what yeah. the hell? And I forgot to close it. See? When we were in Greece, when the Zenith was launched, I was showing it to somebody. I was like, look how easy it is to take the coal out. So I open it on top to show them how you fill it, and I left it open. So then I take the tank and I turn it upside down to remove the coil, and all the liquid goes. <laughs> it feels like, wait, well, good job of promoting our products, there, buddy. So yeah, yeah but, but you it know happens. what though? Like, like somebody, somebody wrote to me when I when I did something like that. I posted it on Facebook. They're like, aren't you embarrassed to, to say something like that? Like with yeah. all your years' experience with vaping, I'm like, no, no, absolutely not. I want to show people that I'm human. I want to show people that mistakes can happen to me the same way they can happen to you yeah. like we have bad vape days that just happens that just happens yeah. and, and it's okay it's okay to laugh at yourself and just work through it work through it and don't smoke another cigarette yeah i think i think i think very very important and i see comments on on debunking myths and stuff it's very important when when we have dr f on is take snippets of what he's saying and just write them down. And if somebody asks you a question or somebody brings it up, you can respond. Just try to take some of these key pieces that he drops because he does drop a lot of knowledge uh, on, on debunking these myths. And just take those little snippets and use them in, in, the, in the arguments that you hear on a daily basis. Look, you know, ideology is ideology. You know, if I, if I you know, uh, um, uh, have this certain belief, it's very, very hard for anybody to change it to me. But... The facts and the science does not lie. We've never said that vaping is safe. We'll always claim that vaping is safer, and we have the data to back that up. What's going to happen 30 years from now? Obviously, we don't know. Uh, but uh, but we do know in the short term that it's better than smoking, and that's what's really, really important for smokers to understand and for the general public to understand that we're not some cult that's trying to hook kids on nicotine. We're just out here trying to help adult smokers quit. Yeah. And, and we, we certainly do appreciate everybody watching the show. But as always, we, we ask you, you know, we're putting out the information. We're doing the show. We're getting the guests. We're, 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 we're doing our part. We just do ask that, that, you know, if you can, you do your, your part, like the show, share the show, invite smokers to watch the show. I mean, I think, you know, it would be nice if, if this show got 100,000 views the same way you know, some reviewers review of another device that does all the same things as the last device, uh, you know, yeah. it, it gets, you know, and, and I would love to see, you know, this show get that kind of viewership. But, you know, unfortunately, you know, when you talk about these kinds of things, they're not as popular as showing shiny things to you, shiny new right. things to you, right? Right. Well, you but got now, a little glimmer on. You got a little shine. By the way, you didn't say anything about I'm a little bit tanned. I'm not as pasty as I, as I was. You didn't say anything about that. Well, because maybe it's your lighting. Because I'm not, I'm not getting it. I'm not seeing the tan. Oh, really? I think you need to work on your lighting a little bit. Yeah, you need to do some Hold adjustments. Let me or fix. Something. Let me fix that right now. Hold on. Let me <laughs> let me try to do that right now. Hold on. Let's see. I'm going to do it right now. Oh, nope. No, that ain't doing That's it. Not That's it. no, no. Try. Oh, there you go. There Does you go. Look We're getting a little tan right there. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, you'll never be as tanned as me. No, absolutely not. No, I tried, but you know, like I said, when you're traveling with three women and a female dog, it's 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 misery. It really is. And you know, I have this I have this thing. I always I always want to. Make, I mean, you know how I am. Just from our relationship, I always want to make people around me happy, and I want to cater to them, and I want to make sure I do everything for them. And it's so hard. It's so hard to cater to the demands of of, of three women. It's just it's impossible. So, but, you know, you said it's, it's actually easier being the uh, the P. Bizarro management team than uh, the it Bureau absolutely is. I will take you over them to cater to any Aww. day of the week, any day really of the week. Appreciate that. Um, really appreciate just a little programming note. We, we will have three episodes back to back here until we leave for California. Um, we, we're, we will be at ECC at the end of the month. Uh, I think it's August 29th and 30th in Ontario. Uh, and then. We our travel heats back up. We're going to Greece in September for the expo there, uh, and then we're going to Paris after the, right after that of October the fourth and fifth for the Paris expo. We will be launching a couple of new stuff over there. We're really really excited, but I'm not going to tell you what it is because every time we do this, something goes wrong and it's pushed back <laughs> six months, and everybody blames me and Phil afterwards. But but we're working you, behind you, the scenes. Do you remember? I'm sorry. Do you remember when the the four mil B pod was supposed to come out? Do you remember what month? April. Yes, April. Yeah. <laughs> so now until they're in production, I'm not going to say anything until they come out. But we are working on a couple of new uh, stuff that's going to be launched in Paris. And right after Paris, we get back from Paris, we'll be in Tampa Bay for the VMX down there. We're very excited to go back in Tampa. They haven't had a show in three years since the VCC stopped. 
So we're very excited to come back uh, into Tampa and um, and. And by uh, the way, very important too for that Tampa event. You're actually flying into Fort Myers. We're going to the Tampa event together. Austin is also coming in, and there will be, ladies and gentlemen, there will be a hot tub live. Yes, hot uh, tub that- live with me, Phil Bussardo, and Austin Hopper. Uh, I don't know if the hot tub can take that much sexiness in it. I, <laughs> I don't know. I guess we're going to find out. <laughs> uh, and also, uh, one week from today, exactly one week from today, I finally take off my Invisalign. So I'm very, very excited about that as well. Too. And I know you're excited about hearing about yeah, my I'm, I'm excited because I can't stand hearing about it anymore. Like, like uh, every time, like you have no idea what it's like to go to dinner with him. Like right away, like you go to dinner and you're like looking forward to a meal. And he's just fucking with all of this. I'm like, that's gross, dude. Can you stop? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We're gonna so, do yeah, it. Like I'm, very, nice, I'm very happy. Beautiful, very straight happy teeth uh, for you now. Uh, last question for a smoker. Would you recommend the gem pen or the Endura T18? That is a great question. Um, I, you know, to me, I, I, I know Phil may, may disagree. To me, I think the gem pen is a fantastic. If you're looking for a round, I would, I would recommend it over the T18, the, the Endura T18 for, for a couple reasons. Number one, it's smaller. It's more close to a cigarette than the T18. The T18 is a great product. Don't, don't get me wrong. I don't want you to, to think that it's not good. It's helped millions of people quit smoking. But I think that the gem pen and the reason why Inican came up with another pen is the size. Okay, the size is much smaller than the original T18. I think it's a little bit more updated in the look. I think it's a little bit sexier. Uh, I think that with a ceramic coil and that low wattage, that higher resistance, I think you get a more flavorful vape uh, for somebody that's looking to quit smoking. I think it's got a very, very tight draw. The draw on the gem pen is... It's fantastic. I think it's it's one of the best draws that I have tried on a pen style electronic cigarette, and it's cheap. I mean, twenty bucks you can't go wrong with with it. So yeah, I was really it's pen. really really dirt cheap. The the vape quality is good. The throat is fantastic. The flavor I think is really good. Um, I, I'm super super excited with the draw on it. But the the question is a good one. Oh, by the way, this is the original T18, and this is the the uh, the gem pen. And really, the only difference between these two, like the battery size is the same. Uh, they both charge with micro USB. The only difference between the two is this has a 0.5 mil capacity more than this one. So yeah. they did wind up putting like basically the same vape in a much smaller package. Um, <clears throat> but what, what, here, here's how I would recommend one of the two products. I, it would be who I'm talking to, right? Yeah. If I'm talking to, I'll give you an example. If I'm talking to my father and my mother, my father would get a T18 too. My mother would get a gem pen, right? Because I know my mom, she, like as simple and easy as possible. Yeah. She's not going to go to a manual. As a matter of fact, uh, I gave her a T18 uh, too. And the last time uh, we were together, she said, I don't, it's just too weak for me. It's too weak. I, yeah. I don't understand. It's not like the last one. I said, well, what power level do you have it on? She yeah. goes, power levels? She had no right, idea. Right. No right. idea. And probably, you know, I, I forgot to tell her that, but... You know, th- that's the difference, right? Yeah. So it depends on who I'm talking to. If somebody can handle maybe just a little bit more complexity, maybe the T18 too, right? But if if, if you want to super, super simple, no adjustments, no nothing, then the gem pen. Yeah. And, and just a general rule on all these devices, we suggest you change the coil once a week. Man, I tell you what, we're, I was in Greece at one of these stores. <laughs> this guy came in. He had his coil in his device for eight months, Phil. For eight months. I, I have no idea. I mean, he was a dual user, obviously. He wasn't using it constantly. But, but he, we opened it up, and it looked like, I mean, the, the, the juice was all burnt down. Everything was black inside. You literally couldn't see. I don't think there was any cotton left. I think it was just feeding directly into the coil. But, yeah, generally once a week, if you want to maintain that good flavor, once a week, it's two, three bucks for crying out loud. You know, much, much cheaper. You can change a coil, like Phil said, every day on the Zenith and still spend less money than you do on cigarettes. But And there are some people that do really like their flavor and they change their coil every two, three days. For me, depending on the liquid that I do, I, you know, I, I found this liquid in uh, the UK. Very, very rare will I find the liquid that I like at a show. And Phil knows I found this this liquid. It, I can only use it in a restricted direct lung. I can't mouth lung it. But it's called uh, Pride on Ice. It's like an r- orange creamsicle uh, with menthol. I add more menthol to it anyway. But I love this liquid. But I got to change my coal every two days. 
I mean, it's, it's, just, it's just it is what it is. You know, if I want to like that nice orange creamsicle <laughs> flavor, I just change my call every day. I, I mean, every two days. That's that's just the price I have to pay for enjoying that orange creamsicle with menthol. Well, let me tell you something. Dimitri's not happy unless his vape is like spraying liquid nitrogen true. into his throat. I mean, it's like he it's, likes it really, really. It's cool. true. It's does. true. It's true. I found another liquid in Greece. This kryptonite. I vaped the whole bottle. Uh, it's like um, it's like uh, Wrigley's uh, mint gum, the green, you know, Wrigley's mint. Gum. Of course, I added more methyl to this as well too. But I had the guys at the shop make it nine milligram for me, and I really, really enjoyed it. I vaped through the whole thing. But I just like minty vapes. I, I like the throat hit that I get out of it, and it's just something that I enjoy. You know. Hey, speaking of really, really liking something, you know that I've been vaping a lot of um, Naked One Hundred lately, yes. right? So the green blast, uh, and I've got it in those new bottles that I got, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. Because I don't like their dripper bottles, the yeah. green blast and the all melon, yeah. right? Uh, I just got some uh, Naked 100 from Bianca, and look what they're going to. Ah, yes, yes. Yeah, they're look at that. Huh? Yeah, that's nice. No more, no more dripper bottles, so I don't have to transfer my liquid into uh, other bottles anymore. Nice. That's cool. Right. Yeah. I, I haven't even opened this one up yet. I want to see what the yeah nice little pointy applicator yay yeah. nice yay. right there you go nice. naked one hundred yeah it's funny how this industry I, I we we're going different direction now we right? we've gone way too long always <laughs> but it's funny how this industry always makes adjustments and and this is the beauty about vaping like they see the demand from the consumer and the industry always comes up with a way to solve issues and I think that. Uh, when I was in, in Greece with these short fields, when we buy these bottles in Greece, they have no nicotine. They're called short fields. There's only 50 ml of liquids inside. Some of them have 40 ml, so you can make it a higher concentration. So you have to open and take this this uh, uh, top cap out and then put your boosters of nicotine inside and then shake it. And so what they came up with, they came up with this little tool, which kind of looks like a bottle opener. <laughs> and you basically put it on here and then you pop your your uh, your short feel so you won't have to cut, cut your fingers like I did in Greece multiple times. It's just how the industry quickly adjusts to everything is really, really cool. You know, and, just, and you know what? That's a good thing. And that's a bad thing, though. Yeah, the, yeah. the industry also, I think, overcorrected mm-hmm. when it went down the sub ohm and clouds and direct lung and low nicotine uh, path that it went down. Yeah, there for a absolutely. While. All right, we've we've uh, covered it all. I hope you enjoyed yeah. the episode today. Before we leave, of course, we do have to thank our wonderful uh, sponsors, uh, Mr. Fuel. Yeah, um, we have uh, Inikin, of course, Inikin. Um, we have Juno. Uh, we have Lunar Rover. Use that coupon code uh, Smokers uh, Smoker Show for fifteen percent off of your order at Lunar Rover. Uh, we have My Vapor Store. Use that coupon code uh, MTL ten. To get 10% off of your order of platform products, Inikin platform products. We have uh, Naked 100. Talked about them uh, a lot tonight. Uh, five Pawns, the fine, fine folks of Signature Vapor E-Liquid Five Pawns. And, of course, our friends from Joy Tech as well. By the way, I'm telling you, I, I use the Juno quite often. I, I like their 36 milligram menthol uh, pod. You know, it's just something that, that the other day when I did the Facebook Live, I was just... I was just in a funk. I was just upset with everything that's happening with the FDA. So I was like, you know, I mean, I'm very, very lucky. And both of us are feel that we have the sponsors that can do that. And I sent the four kits out and I want to see what kind of response I'm going to get. These are nice little kits. They have three pods inside for somebody that's starting. They can try various flavors and stuff like that. But but these are very, very good products for people to try vaping. And I think the simplicity of it with a pod system, again, for somebody that doesn't want to refill and go through all that process the juno is a fantastic product and it works and it works with regular free based nicotine not salt nicotine well what that, that's flavor- what i actually like about the juno is that i get some throat hit from yeah it. what flavor would you recommend somebody who smokes marlboro reds gld from lunar rover lunar rover uh, uh e-liquid the gld is is a really good tobacco flavor for somebody that smokes uh, marlboro reds so i hope that helps a lot and steel says uh, lunar rover black <laughs> Yeah, maybe it is black. I'm sorry. Maybe I made a mistake. Maybe it is BLK, uh, Lunar Rover, BLK. I think it is, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think it is BLK. Yeah. I always get those two confused. Yeah, BLK from uh, from Lunar Rover. All right, we've said it all. Uh, yeah. Please uh, like and share this video with your smoker friends. Uh, try to get the information that's very, very popular. Uh, it's not very, very popular. The, the bad science is very, very popular, unfortunately, in the mainstream media here. So we're trying to do our little part here on the corner of YouTube to try to 
pass on accurate information. Phil. Sure. And I'm sorry that Reggie didn't make an appearance tonight. He's probably sleeping so much. My so. cat gained so much weight when we were away. This you cat is very needy. It was it was uh, the one that's in the in the house, which he's going to go outside soon. Um, but Leo was a rescue cat. And he's very, very needy. Like, he's constantly, you know, he's like a mancoon. I don't know what they call him. So he's constantly, meow, meow. Come here, he wants, Come here. He wants attention. But when we were gone, I think he went into depression because the cleaning lady would come in and feed him. And he would attack her. Like, attack to get affection and petting. So now that we got back, he's constantly, like, always following me around. But he gained so much weight. I think it was just eaten through his depression, which is... A problem that I've I've had multiple years. <laughs> so was, I get I gained I gained eight pounds in grief. I'm I'm back. You know I'm I've dropped. I'm doing my regiment and I'm working out every day. Uh, but I'm getting back to my my normal weight. But I went to two thirteen, my friend, in Greece. The, in the delicious pastries and gyro and pita and stuff like that. But I'm back on track. Great. Right, now I'm hungry. Yeah, I, I, that's one of the things I'm really looking forward. I'm, I'm looking forward to the people in Greece, but I'm also looking forward to the food. Uh, and, and you do uh, treat me very, very well there. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, there's something else. Oh, uh, this has nothing to do with vaping. It has nothing to do with the smoker show. Mm -hmm. But uh, I took your advice and I binge watched uh, because I know this show was so popular and everybody was talking about it. Yeah. And I was, I, was, I was not watching it because I'm not really a, a, much of a fantasy guy. But oh my God, Game of Thrones was amazing. I'm, I'm glad that you watched it. I told you I was the same way. I wow. never watched it a day in my life. And Nicole, that I, when I worked at Mountain Oak Vapors, told me, he's like, oh, you got to watch it. I'm like, ah, I don't know. And it was like seven seasons at the time or eight. So I um, I said, well, I don't know if I'm kind of like into it. And then she's like, well, it's got boobs and stuff like that. I was like, well, I'll go, might as well watch it. <laughs> so so I started watching it and then I binged it. I, I crushed the whole thing. And, and the last season, you know, I don't know. I guess it's too late for spoilers now, but... I, I really like the ending, and I, I like how it finished, and I think overall it was a very, very well done uh, series. I thought it was amazing. I mean, like the the acting, the sets, the like, just everything was really, really well done. Really well done. There there were several times where I was watching it, and I actually said out loud, "Oh my god!" or "I can't believe that just happened." So hey, when whenever anything like gets a response like that from me, that's pretty good. That's pretty yeah. good. So yeah, it was. It was I, well worth it. Watch. I'm watching Orange is the New Black now, the last season. But this is one very good. Th this is a very good tip for you guys that, that if you want to lose weight or whatever. When I do my workout regimen, I get on the treadmill and I do two and a half miles, which is approximately it takes me approximately 40 minutes, 40, 42 minutes to do two and a half miles. So what I do is I put an episode on, which is generally between 40 and 50 minutes. I put an episode on and I get on the treadmill uh, and and I just watch one episode and I don't binge them. If you binge it, you've missed that opportunity to do the workout. So I look forward to getting up every you know every morning and getting on my treadmill and watching the shows that I watch just one episode uh, at a time. So yeah, that's, that's what I'm watching. That's now. a really good idea. The only problem is my my um, my workout is riding the bike around the neighborhood and it's hard yeah. to binge watch TV while you're doing that. It is it is hard, but I'm telling you, if you get a stationary bike or something like that, if it, it gives you. It gives you that desire to watch the show yeah. and finish the the what you started. So to me, I've timed it where you know when I started doing treadmill through uh, January of 2017, to do two miles, two miles, it would take me 45 minutes, Phil. And now I can get knock out two miles in like 32 minutes. That's Good for the difference. You, brother. Good so, for you. I'm so proud of you. I thank really you, am. I appreciate it. I have an uh, Air Aria shirt. Looks like Air Jordan. Yeah, I've seen that. That's really really cool as well too. Hey, I'm gonna do my first uh, boat e liquid review. What are you reviewing? What liquid are you reviewing? Um, you you know this guy too. Well, he has he has twelve milligram. He has fifty fifty. He has seventy thirty. He's got a whole bunch of stuff. Big Willie. Big Willie. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, he yeah. has that custard that's very very popular with a lot of people. Big Willie's custard, I think it's called. Yep. So he sent me all twelve milligrams. He sent me fifty fifties, high VGs, everything. I'm probably gonna go with the fifty fifty. Well, I I am gonna go with the fifty fifties and the seventy yeah. thirties and. Yeah, so I'll do my first I'm uh, review. I'm excited about that. That's going to be so much fun, man. That's going to be maybe when I come down we'll do a review as well too. So if you got any companies that do 12 and 18 milligram 50/50, get in touch with us and uh maybe we'll do a dual review from the boat. Uh yeah, didn't, didn't another company just release a 12 milligram line 50/50? USA Vape, I think it's called or something like that. They released a big line with a lot of products. So maybe I'll reach out Chip Anderson. I saw him posting from from Virginia about it, so maybe I'll reach out to them. And but if you know anybody, just send them our way. I'd be more than happy yeah. to take a look at it. And it's nice, 
it's nice and a little bit rewarding for me and feel to see 12 milligram be a thing again. Just remember, we were vaping 12 milligram before it was hot. <laughs> I guess it's just now everybody's like, oh, like 12 milligram. Uh, like, okay, bro. You know, when we were two years ago, uh, we couldn't find any 12 milligrams. So, but it's nice to see it. I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying. If we're setting a trend, great, fantastic. It's a good trend. You know, once, uh, once you know, mouth, and once it's nothing but mouth to lung and 12 milligram again or higher. Um, we should start a new uh, direct lung trend, low nicotine. What do you think? You want to do it? Yeah, let's do that. Let's like, <laughs> when everybody's vaping, but we have to do it when everybody's vaping 12 milligram. Right, we're going right, to say, yeah. okay, now we're dropping to three. <laughs> and now we're sub ohming. <laughs> That's great. All right, all right brother, We said it all. Up. Absolutely. We certainly appreciate everybody hanging. And don't forget, uh, encourage your uh, friends and family to switch vaping. We'll see you in two weeks.